Oh man, I keep forgetting I gotta update the intro. All right, let's see. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Everybody was good. Y'all was good. Y'all was good. Y'all. I still got to get the intro right. I don't know why I have the, uh, I still have the old intro for uh, the thing. Um, but man, what's happening y'all, man? It's been a minute, been a minute. I'm going to be live streaming a lot this week because of the draft. So y'all already know Thursday through Saturday. I got y'all was good. I'm working on these immediately after I'm done live streaming right now. My boy ASAP, uh, Geo suggested, uh, Nick Cross for the, one of my unedited raw film sessions so i'm gonna get to him i'm gonna get to a lot of georgia players so like immediately after i'm done live streaming that's what i'm about to get to and so today we're just gonna be chilling we're gonna probably do mock draft for two talk draft i'm gonna open up the phone lines for y'all to call in and we could just talk about the draft put us on some players that you that you know about that maybe the rest of us don't you know what i'm saying it's just gonna be a nice chill stream may go for an hour depending on what's going on may go for two you know what i'm saying what's happening y'all man we got rich first was good finish the lyrics i hope you understand wait i don't i don't know what song that's from you lost me with that one man what's good joseph was good was good second was good was good captain was good what's up everybody pray someone takes drake, <laughs> drake london before so we don't have the chance to get him <laughs> you don't even want them to even be tempted huh What's good, Reggie Reg? What's good? Can't wait either, man. I'm so excited. Um, I hit up Shay. I'm gonna see if he's gonna pull up to live stream with me during the draft. Um, so we're gonna see how that go. But you know, when it down, no matter what, I'm gonna be live streaming Thursday night, Friday night, and summer Saturday as well. My boy Justin J. Terry was good. Anthony Thomas was good. Uptown Dre was good. King Sean, Ben Willard, Asan was good. Everybody. My boy Tut was happening with you. Make sure y'all go go listen to my boy Tut new EP, man. Y'all gotta go check that out, man. It's been a while since you've done the stream. Yeah, I'm about to get back on it too, man. I mean, especially this weekend. Like I said, Thursday through Saturday. I'm live streaming all day or all night type of stuff. So we about to get on it. I was working on my final mock for us. I'm still working on mine as well, but there's just so much stuff going on. Like I had to report on a Deron Payne situation, so that pushed everything back further um but yeah and i got i still got to do these raw and edited film sessions for the uh, channel members so i'm definitely about to work on nick cross next yeah it's been a while since you did stream glad you're back appreciate it man what's good og oj turner what's good what's good do i need to take this retainer out i hate the way i talk with this retainer man william robinson because i finally got my braces off but now i got this retainer that got me talking crazy i don't look like jimmy from ed and Eddie, but i sound crazy mr jones was good was good just lifted and did some work on the field too. Now I'm tired. I feel that. Good working, good working. I'm trying to get my body right before I go to New York. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to New York. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully I can move to New York too. But at the when in doubt, I'm going to New York. My friends and my cousins and all that. Trying to trying to exercise and get right before that. You know what I'm saying? About to be outside all day, every day. I would love Drake London. I think everyone else is tripping, although I prefer Hamilton. What's good, Billy? Yeah, I don't hate Drake London as much as everybody else does. Also, don't love him, but yeah, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be highly upset if we got him. I prefer Hamilton as well, but yeah. I mean, like I've already said in several videos, I feel like a lot of these receivers are so close to each other. I don't feel like there's, like, a big gap. And I, I prefer to just take one of the guys later in the first, maybe early second, and I feel like they have a, just as almost just as good of a chance of being great as the other guys. So um, I personally don't like receiver at 11 because the the draft is so deep. The only receiver I love enough to possibly take at 11 is Jamison Williams, honestly. And then he has that torn ACL, which I'm not worried about. But that's the reason we won't take him at 11. What's good, Jay? What's good? Charlie was good. Was good. Was good. It's LXRD. Was good. Was good. I'm pretty sure I've had quite a bit of new subscribers, too, since the last time I streamed. So I, I got to learn some new names, man, because I try to get to the comment section of the videos, but I'm just so busy doing so much stuff and working on new content that I don't get to look at all of the comments like I used to. Because y'all remember, a lot of y'all that have been here for a long time remember back in the day, I used to reply to literally every single comment. Um, but now it's just, I'm so busy working on so many videos and stuff like that. So I'm trying, but we're going to get to it. My boy Dex was good. Taco the boss was good, was good, was good. F it, everyone, man. Draft the lineman, we need it. <laughs> Ronald was good. Scott, my boy Scott from the UK was good. 
We have our UK draft party. That's good. That's good. Dequavius was good. Favorite time of the year, man. Yeah, yes, sir. The draft, man. I'm so excited, man. It's same here, man. One of my favorite parts of the season. Honestly, I mean, I love Sundays. I love my Saturdays. But the draft is so fun, man. Drake London or Traylon Burks or Christian Watson, who you want out of these three? That's tough. That's tough. I think Christian Watson ceiling is crazy. Traylon Burks, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I guess my argument would be when could you get him? Are we talking about Christian Watson, second round, Traylon Burks, late first, Drake London at 11? If we're talking about value, if we're not just talking about the players specifically, if we're talking about when you would probably get them, I may have to go with Traylon Burks late in the first. Like, say we trade back, get Traylon Burks or George Pickens. Y'all know I want George Pickens. And Daxton Hill, I think that's a home run first round, to, in my opinion. So, um, so out of those three, Drake London at 11, Traylon Burks late first, Christian Watson in the second, I'd probably take Traylon Burks late first for sure. What's good, Dubs? My boy j Mon was good. Derek Stingley is there. We need to take him. He has pure talent. What's good, Sean? Yeah, man, that man is yeah, – Derek Stingley super talented, man. I, I, I think he – I don't think we're going to take him, and I think he will make it past us. I think his floor, though, is probably, like, top 15, honestly. Can't wait for the draft. My boy AJ, appreciate the donation, my boy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Again, just to remind y'all, I'm going to open up the phone line so we can just talk draft. We can do some mock drafts and all of that type of stuff. If you want to, I can just have this screen up. And if y'all let me know, if y'all want me to, like, change the view on it, like what round you prefer to see and stuff like that, or if you just don't care to really see this, have this in the way in the first place. Um, but thank you for the donation, my boy AJ, man. Appreciate that. Make sure you get a chopped cheese while you're there. Of course, I got a spot on, uh, what's that? 145th and, and Frederick Douglass, I think. I think that's where it is. It's by uh, Jacobs. It's over there by the uh, projects. I forgot the name of those projects, too. But it's like, dang, I can't describe it. If you're not from New York, I don't know. It's hard to describe because I can't remember names. I'm not good with names. I'm more so landmarks. Like, I could get there without my phone, without a map, but I couldn't exactly tell you where projects are right there in the exact, I think it's 145th. I think it's 144th, 145th, one of those in Frederick Douglass, I believe. So yeah, I'm getting my chopped cheese from the Ock and everything. It's the Middle Easterns, it's not the uh, Dominicans. They're, they're, but that's my favorite chopped cheese in New York. I still gotta get my bacon. I have a really good bacon, egg and cheese spot in Sugar Hill too, that I'm gonna have to go hit up as well. And I got my Italian restaurants in the Bronx and Little Italy. I'm hitting all of those up, bro. I'm not I'm not playing when I go back because who knows when I'm going to come back and when I'm going to be able to move there. My boy, appreciate that, though. Captain, what's good, Jason? Hamilton, a bus for me. I wouldn't say bus, but, yeah, like, Hamilton's my number one for sure. Personally, I'm taking Pickens later. Yeah, Pickens later is great, bro. Like, I think that's home run hitting value. We can get a receiver in the second. I agree. I'm And I'm in that same boat. Kyle Hamilton first, receiver in the second. Or, you know, end up possibly trading back, getting Daxton Hill in the receiver. That way you get, like, maybe a slightly less of what we need type of safety, but a better receiver because you're picking them late in the first rather than 47th overall in the second. So, I mean, out of the way, we can take Pickens in the second. Honestly, I'm not sure if Pickens makes it past the Bills, the Chiefs, all of these teams that they're just one more receiver away from having potentially the best offense in the NFL. I think some, Pickens is going to get taken by one of those great teams, and that's going to make me happy. If we don't get him, if we don't end up taking him, I want him to go to one of those great teams to prove everybody wrong and the ball out. I want him to, like, if he can end up on the Chiefs and directly replace Tyreek Hill and go out there and get 1,300 yards a season, go do that. I recently, just like my boy Malik Willis, I've already accepted the fact we're not going to get him, so I want him to go all the way to Pittsburgh, and Mike Tomlin's going to do right by him. He's going to get there. They draft receivers very well. Every three years, they get, like, a super sleeper, really good receiver out of nowhere. It's just what they do. Been doing it for so many years. Um, the offensive line was built very well until everybody pretty much left in the same offseason, retiring and all of that type of stuff. So I, I, but I'm confident in Mike Tomlin being able to build that offensive line right back up. And their defense is always, it's the Steelers. Their defense is always going to be some type of good or at least have a few playmakers on that side of the ball. So um, Malik Willis to the Steelers. I already know we're not getting them. So Steelers is my favorite destination for him. George Pickens, I want him to go to the Chiefs. I want Jordan Davis to go to the Ravens. I think that's my favorite spot for him. Um, I think Travon Walker 
and maybe even Devontae Wyatt, they may end up going to bad teams because they're going to get taken so early. Um, Nicobe Dean, I, I, I mean, I don't want him to slide money-wise, but I think team fit-wise, I would love for Nicobe Dean to slide. Maybe he goes to the Ravens. I don't know. I think he would ball out on the Ravens, even though they just took Patrick Queen a couple of years ago. But if they want another linebacker, there you go. Um, and the whole went straight is causing a ripple effect on the team. It's not looking good. Yeah, I was just talking about that in my uh, in my um, video I just put out a couple of hours ago. About to get my braces off next month. Okay, my boy Rich. Yeah, I thought I was going to get like a regular metal retainer, but they pulled up with the Invisalign type thing. I I, I wasn't ready. I, I, did, I didn't have Invisalign as regular braces, so that, that caught me off guard. Man, the whole went, all right, I just read that. I recently just got my glasses, bro. Go to Zenny Optical, bro. They got the best glasses. Bro. All my glasses you've ever seen in any of my videos are all prescription. They're super customizable. You think Trayvon Walker can play D-Tackle too? Yeah, I think, I mean, if you're, say, I mean, define D-Tackle. Because if you're running like a 3-4 defense, you need somebody to basically be like a three tech type of thing. I think he can do that, especially occasionally. Maybe not permanently, but I think occasionally he's tough enough. He's definitely tough enough. Derek or Wilson? Derek, like Derek Carr or Russell Wilson? Or who we, wait, Garrett Wilson or Derek, wait, wait, I'm lost. I'm lost. My brain is scrambled right now. You, What do you, what do you mean by that, Jason? Wins. He's having an MVP caliber season. He better after all of this. I think London goes to the Jets. Man's birthday was Saturday. Okay, happy belated, j Mon. Salvi was good, was good, was good. Are you going to be at a draft party? No, I'm going to be live streaming right here. Like I said, like, I love the draft too much, and it would be fun to go to, like, draft parties and stuff. Um, and, and I mean, maybe one year, but I love live streaming and watching the draft, like being here, watching the players go, having Twitter up, having y'all in the comment sections, being like three picks ahead. I don't really mind that. It's kind of fun. It's kind of the fun in it, trying to be the first one to find out who, who, like who, who got picked where and stuff like that. Like this, just in the such and such are about to take the set. Like, I just love the whole thing with the draft process. I see what Bomani Jones means where we need to like change it a little bit and restructure it to where it's not as bad as it kind of is but as a viewer and as not as a player the draft is so fun to me so i i mean a draft party would be fun but like i don't even want to be talking to people like that I mean, again maybe i'll do it some year like i could just go out and do it but like i don't even like my main thing isn't to be out hanging with people laughing i'm just straight draft and us reacting in the comment section and all that i, I literally love that so I, i'm going to definitely be live streaming the draft at home this year for sure and in the for in the foreseeable future, oh, uh, where we at? If we get Hamilton in the first, then who do you want in the second? Do we go linebacker or wide out? I think we probably go wide receiver. To be honest, was good. Dave in DC, Terry McLaurin was good. The Aki way, Drake London. Okay, Joe and Erica was good. Was good. You gonna be in the Bronx? Yeah, I'll be everywhere in New York, bro. I'm, bro. I don't know. I, I guess because of drill music, people think New York is terrible, and it has gotten worse. But it's not worse than Atlanta, man. Like, his, his, bro, trust me, as somebody that's lived in New York for five years, lived in Atlanta most of my life, it's, I don't even think it's close. Like, I'll literally be chilling in New York. Everywhere, you know, you got to watch out what you're doing everywhere you are. But New York, it's, it's really not that, it's not that bad. We get in the vlog. Oh, yeah, I'm always going to record. When we go to New York and do stuff, I'm always going to record it. It's just a matter of, like, editing it and putting it out because like i edited and released our first time going to new york like well, well as a group that time that wasn't my first time in new york but our first like new york trip as a group with that group of people my cousins and those set of friends because i went before with it with some of my friends like years before that and then we went again a second time like right before the pandemic but i have the footage i just haven't felt like editing it and putting it out but like yeah on the uh What's it called? Street Scopes, S C O P E S. I have the first trip up there. If y'all want to go check that out, but we were so young, it was so long ago. Everybody looking, sound different. It's crazy. 
I feel we're drafting Hamilton in the first. I think it's definitely between Drake London and Kyle Hamilton. So at that point, it's no really debate outside of that. At this point, we might as well debate, do you prefer Drake London or Kyle Hamilton? Anybody else is pretty much out of the window. Um, just based on reports from John Conn, Ben Standig, guys that are like a really trustworthy and really close to the organization, might as well just go ahead and accept it's going to be one of those two unless they're both taken and then maybe we trade back. I've wanted Stingley since he played a freshman at LSU, bro. Everybody did. All 32 NFL teams wanted that man after that freshman season, boy. I really want Sterling Weatherford. I think he's a nice late-round pick no matter what we do early. I feel that. Do you like Jalen Petray? I like him as a player, but I'm not sure about him. Scheme fit. The only, like, I don't love Jalen as much as a lot of other people do. Like, late first round, second round type of thing. So, I don't think, I, I guess technically the answer is no. Because where he's going to end up getting taken in the draft, I'm not willing to use that pick on him. But I like him as a player. But I'm just, I, I, he's outside of my radar because he's going to get taken way sooner than I'm willing to go take him. So, we consider taking a slot or a no. Um, We'll see. We'll see. I don't think so. I think we can figure it out with slot because technically Terry can play slot. Technically, Curtis Samuel. Deami Brown still needs to get better with his route running and separation. But I think he could end up doing that. Dax Milne shows some flashes. So I wouldn't worry about slot. I mean, of course, we're going to bring in receivers. Even if we take a receiver 11th overall, we're going to bring in some late round guys. At the very least, an undrafted free agent. I'm pretty sure at least one of those guys will probably be a slot guy. But as far as like earlier in the draft or mid draft, no, nah, I don't think we need to go slot. Me personally. But who knows though? I mean, maybe there's a guy that slept on. What's that guy from UCLA? I forgot his name, but he's going to end up going to a team and balling out, bro. I can't remember his name. The UCLA receiver that's like probably, you could argue, the best slot here in this draft. I like Jahan Dotson a lot too in the slot. And then, of course, you have guys like, I mean, I think it's unfair, but Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson can play slot. They could be great in the slot, but they can also be great outside. I'm talking about pure slots. Like, that's pretty much all they're going to do. That UCLA receiver, bro, don't sleep on him. I can't remember his name right now, though. That's safety from my man, him, Ohio Baylor. If we trade the 11th for two Packers first, would you take Dean and Watson and put Holcomb at Mike? Nah, me personally not. And I love N'Kobe Dean, but I want him to go to a better situation, first of all. And plus, we're not going to take two outside linebackers back-to-back -back in the first round. Um, but yeah, uh, Christian Watson in the second, I'm down, especially if George Pickens is already gone. But I definitely prefer George Pickens. My bad, Stingley or Garrett Wilson. My boy, Ravi Ray in the suit. My boy in the suit. I'm not... I'm not against Hamilton at 11 no more. I'm just scared we won't use him right. I think we will. I mean, I think literally if we allow him to do what Landon Collins did, he's just going to do that but better. Like, because he can cover a deep downfield. Remember, we wanted Landon Collins as close to the line of scrimmage as possible because we didn't want him covering receivers, nobody. We want you straight line of scrimmage, linebacker, pursuing the run. And even going after the quarterback if you have to. But then you can ask Kyle Hamilton to go back there and run cover two with Cameron Curl or cover three with Cameron Curl and Bobby McCain with a straight face. Um, I just think you can't miss. Now, I see what people are saying, like, safety at 11th overall is too far. I can kind of see that. But I think he's going to be such a great player, we won't look back. We won't be like, man, I wish I didn't use an 11th pick on that guy. I think he's basically going to have the same impact for us, like Minka Fitzpatrick had for the Steelers. And I think, honestly, Hamilton may end up even being better. I'm just that high on me on uh, Kyle Hamilton. I love Minka Fitzpatrick. I love them coming out of Alabama. Um, but I'm just more excited about Kyle Hamilton, me personally. Maybe it's because we actually have the chance to get him. When, when, when Minka Fitzpatrick was coming out, I already knew we weren't getting him. Um, so maybe I'm just, maybe I'm biased because I feel like we actually have a chance to get Kyle Hamilton, but I don't know. I think he's going to end up being really good. What's good, DMV 2000? But I think Daxton Hill will be a stud. Yeah, I love, that's what I'm saying. If we, if Kyle Hamilton's gone before 11, trade back, get Daxton Hill and a receiver. And I think we won the draft. Well, Hamilton, Mechie, or Pickens, I like that. Love Calvin Austin the third. Okay, okay, love Pickens, but he won't be there at 47. Yeah, he's not making it past the, the Chiefs and the Bills and all of those teams. He's not. And again, I don't want him to. I want him to go to a great situation because the odds of us getting them are very slim. I want Malik Willis to go to the Steelers. I want George Pickens to go to the Chiefs. I want my George the Bulldogs all to go the right situation. I want Jordan Davis on the Ravens. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to go to the best possible spot if we're not going to get them. I want, I want my guys to ball out. And y'all already know, Cal Hamilton's from Atlanta, so like I, that makes me want them even more than I, already, than I originally wanted to. Um, London and Daxton Hill would be a great fit. 
I'm pre- yeah, Drake London and Daxton Hill, I can see that. I don't Daxton Hill's, I mean, Daxton Hill's not making out of the first round, though. No. I'm praying we don't draft London. <laughs> Calvin Austin is gonna be one of the best players to come out of this draft. I've been saying that too. He's a slower Michael Pittman. I still think should drop the QB because if Wentz gets hurt or doesn't perform, we back to the same situation as last year. Sean, I'm right with you, but I've already given up on it. I, I wish, but I doubt it. When Garrett Wilson and ATL people can just carry without permits. I mean, people, I don't really think it's changed much because people were doing it anyway. Um, but I guess now it's legal. So now I guess slightly more people were doing it. But like it, I don't, it's not like it's different out here because of that. Um, Shay going um to new york i asked him he asked about it and then he said he may not be able to do it because he may be busy at the time but he's still open like hopefully he will be able to go so yeah hopefully Trey, you can't go to new york with this london is a tough runner after the catch i agree it was hella fat then i've been watching hella drake london tape and i just love the way he actually comes back to the ball not even just him being tall he actually attacks the ball grab like a grabbing a rebound feel that again i I don't hate drake london like a lot of people do but i also don't love him i'm not you know i'm not oh man we got to get drake london at 11. i prefer kyle hamilton and take re receiver in a second if i really really love drake london i wouldn't even chance it at 11. but me personally i'm okay with not getting drake london getting george pickens later getting christian watson later either one of those guys i'm, I'm cool with that london is a tough player like jordan <laughs> like jordan reed london I, I man jordan reed was supposed to be so great London is good underneath two quick feet, just no top speed. That's basically how I feel about it. He's not going to really beat people deep, but he can separate underneath. He has enough quick twitch, and he's not a great route runner, but he has enough in his game to where if he has a quarterback that actually throws the ball on time, boy, USC's quarterback, what's his name, Slovis, whatever, terrible. If he actually has a quarterback that knows how to get him the ball on time when he's open, throwing it, throw it before he's open, so as soon as he gets open, the ball is there. He can do that. He's not only a contested catch guy to me. I, d I don't think he's Josh Doxson. I don't. But again, I'm not like in love with Drake London. I I'll prefer Kyle Hamilton at 11 for sure. And I still think I'm sticking by it. I think George Pickens will probably has a good case to be the best receiver from this draft class. But we'll see. I mean, corner maybe, but I think it's more of an outside corner probably. Me, mean, wide receiver, Curtis Samuels, that guy. What about the hybrid linebacker from Montana State? I think his name is Ant Troy Anderson. Um, He's a really interesting idea. I did, did, didn't we meet with him? I'm going on here. Yeah, we met with Troy Anderson. Linebacker, he's projected to go third round, but who knows? And plus, remember, we don't have a third or a fifth round pick, so do with that as you will with these mock drafts. That's why these mock drafts have been a little late. Like, it's been more fun this year because we have no idea what's going to happen. Picks one through ten before us, so it's kind of interesting to see how that plays out. But it's been not as fun because we don't have a third and a fifth round pick. You get to the third round, all these good players are still here. And you're like, man, I'm not going to be able to get none of them? Like, bro, it sucks. All right, bro, mock drafts this year sucked because we don't have that third round pick and now we're about to potentially not even have one next year a third or a second next year cal phillips khalil shakir probably two of the best main slot receivers to me yep but the guy from usc i really like him man what is the story on drake london i heard he's a slow big receiver i didn't know why he is so high on boys jay williams is track speed difference maker yeah like i said jameson williams is my wide receiver one as a Georgia Bulldog fan, he's the only receiver that struck fear in my heart this entire season, that whole season that we went. We had arguably the best defense in, in college football history, and we literally had no answer for Jamison Williams. And I just feel like that's going to translate so well to the NFL. How wouldn't it? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, we had nothing. You couldn't put Dean on him. You couldn't put Keely Ringo, who's going to be a top 10 cornerback pick a couple of years from now. He's a true freshman. But either way, I mean, he's, what, 6'2", runs like a 4'3", something. Jamison Williams was giving him the business. Like, we literally had no answer. You couldn't put none of these great prospects. Jordan Davis, Trevon Walker, Devontae Wyatt, Jalen Carter, who y'all will know about next year. Um, Nolan Smith, who you'll know about next year. None of these. We had no answer. We couldn't get enough pressure on Bryce Young to stop Jamison Williams from getting the ball. Like, there was literally no answer for Jamison Williams. I really hope he doesn't end up somewhere in the NFC East because I do not feel like going against him twice a year. That's why he's my wide receiver one. He's the one that strikes the most fear. Like, if I had to imagine Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, any of these receivers from this class on an, on an NFC East team like the Cowboys, the Giants, or the Eagles – 
the one that would strike the most fear in my heart when we played him every Sunday is Jamison Williams. And that just, he's automatically my wide receiver one just because of that alone. I'm afraid of Jamison Williams, bro. I really want to go get him. Um, bro, he is different. I'm so afraid of that, man. As a Georgia, as somebody, as one of the greatest defenses in college football history, we had no answer for my guy. We had no answer for Jamison Williams, bro. I am, I'm so scared of him. Um, so, bruh, we had no answer, bruh. It didn't matter. It, it literally no matter what we did. Zone defense, man coverage. The one big play where he had on Keely Ringo in the uh, SEC championship before, like, the national championship. The one where he, like, stopped and then went again. We had safety help. He beat the safety help over top. Like, bruh, like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, bruh, please do not let him go to another team in the NFCs, bruh. I'm begging y'all. Won't be happy if they go running back early. Me neither. I don't want to do that. Rico, have you heard of Marcus Jones? Why do I recognize that name? Why do I, what school is that? What position? My guy Rio would update nervous. What's good? What's good? KP Underdog, appreciate you pulling up. They're going to be nervous this year. But as of right now, I'm nervous about this draft. I'm not going to lie. What's good, Billy? Trade Payne, get the picks, and don't draft a receiver in the first. This fan base. <laughs> it was good. Roger, yeah, I want to go Kyle Hamilton. I'll take receiver in the second or trade back and get receiver. Um, Rico, you think Lewis Seen makes it to the second? Nah. Nah, Lewis Seen's too good for that. Again, another, we had no answers for Jamison Williams. Lewis Seen, too. Like, it didn't matter who we put on him, bro. We have all these guys that run 4-3s, four 4-4s, four athletic freaks. No answer for Jamison Williams, bro. We might trade Payne to a team for two firsts and a third. Man, that's best case scenario because I'm hoping we at least get a third from it. We go hoping we get Hamilton and then or trade back to get more. Yep, that's me right there. Um, we need Daxton Hill. I love Daxton Hill. Y'all know me, man. I've been talking about Daxton Hill since last summer. Like I, bro, I'm like, bro, y'all go check my mock draft. My way too early mock draft. I did early fall. Where I'm like, bruh, Daxton Hill, I'm telling y'all, I've been watching him, man. I want Daxton Hill so bad. If we don't get Kyle Hamilton, please get me Daxton Hill. What's good, JP6? What's good? As an Oregon fan, I might cry if Thibodeau goes to the Giants. You don't you hate that, man? A guy you've watched for like the last two, three, three, four years maybe on your favorite college team. Now he goes to a rival in your division at the NFL level. Now you got to root against them. That's going to hurt my heart if any of my Georgia Bulldogs or Malik Willis or or even I, I'm really attached to Jamison Williams. I know he didn't go play for Georgia, but I just think I really think he's wide receiver one. And at this point, just because other people feel like he isn't, I've grown more attached to him. So I really don't want to go against Jamison Williams, first of all, because I think he's going to kill us. And also, it's going to be hard for me to root against him. I mean, even when Georgia was playing against him, he was just so great. You know, sometimes even when you're going against a rival team, somebody's just so great. You can't hate. Like, even if you're a LeBron fan, when you when you were going against KD at times or vice versa, like, you just can't hate. Like, they're just too good. That was kind of like Jamison Williams for me. Even though he, Alabama is just, bro, he, I really don't want to have to root against Jamison Williams, man. Because it's going to feel, first of all, it's going to feel like it's going to be all for nothing. Me putting all that energy into hating on him, and then he's going to just go for 200 yards, two touchdowns anyway. Um, I hope we trade back with the Chiefs with their two first grab, Daxton and Pickens. I think that's a home run, Chris. That's what I've been saying for a few weeks, a couple of months now. Not getting two firsts and a third for pain. A third and a fifth is probably the best. But that's what I'm saying, too. I think it's somewhere in that realm. Two firsts and a third would be wonderful, but I don't think that's realistic. Um, are you talking about Kyle Phillips? From yeah, Kyle Phillips, man. I like that's my bro. I love Kyle Phillips. I don't think we're gonna get him because we don't need a slot receiver that bad, and he's not making it past the third round. But I really like Kyle Phillips, bro. From UCLA to slot, man. Oh man, I might have to do a film session on him just cause, cause he's so fun to watch. Please Jets take London so we don't get a chance to mess this up. London is great at boxing out. DB, I would say that. Argo is good. Drake London slow in the field. DBs will eat his food. Lewis Seen is my guy. Can't wait to see him get drafted. Yo, I'm telling, bro, if Lewis Seen goes to the right defense, I think he's going to become a pro bowler, and I'm going to be so happy for him. I think Lewis Seen is really underrated too, man. I mean, even as a Georgia Bulldog, and I'm not trying to be a homer, I think Lewis Seen is great. Only thing is, like, I would really want Lewis Seen if we didn't already have Cameron Curl. Um, and even though it's slightly different play styles, but I just feel like him and Cameron Curl, neither of them can really play single high free safety. Even though Lewis Seen has crazy speed, I just never really saw it at Georgia. 
He just doesn't seem rangy back end wise. He's very rangy sideline to sideline speed in that linebacker front seven space. But like back end wise, I just I don't think him and Cameron him and Cameron Crow would shut everything down underneath. But I want somebody that can handle it deep on the back end. And I think Daxton Hill is a better fit for that. But Lewis seems gonna go somewhere and become a Pro Bowler. It's a shame Reed has so many concussions. Yeah, he's supposed to be so great. What's good luck? Man, I think trading back is going to be way easier than people think. I think so, too. There's some players that a lot of teams are attached to that they want to get their hands on. Like, I think I think the Steelers may actually trade up to try to get Willis or a lot of these receivers. Like, if somebody really loves Garrett Wilson, somebody may want to move up to 11 to get him. His highlights look like they in slow motion. <laughs> Chad Muma. I like Chad Muma. I like Chad Muma in a second, potentially. But I just don't think the Washington Commanders care about linebacker that much. They're prioritizing the Buffalo nickel way more. And they may just go get a veteran line. There's still a lot of veteran linebackers available in free agency right now. So maybe after the draft, if we don't draft a guy high enough to their liking, maybe we go get one of those veterans after free, after the draft. PJ is one of the best scheme fits in the draft, along with Leo Chanel. I like Leo Chanel a lot as well. I like him a lot. I do like him a lot. I know he shouldn't fall, but I feel like Pickens might fall the early second, like T. Higgins did. I mean, hey, we can get if we can get T, uh, George Pickens in a second, I'm doing backflips. How you feel about getting defensive player first round and tight end second and signing Julio Jones Beckham or another free agent? What's good? First of all, it was good talk. I already said it was good to you, but um, I can see that working. Let's like, say Kyle Hamilton in the first, Trey McBride in the second. And then picking up Julio or Beckham in free agency. That that could work. That's interesting. I see, I like to see how that goes. That may not be my best case scenario, but I don't think that's a really bad idea. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? What's good, Smokes? What's good, Michael Stark? What's good? What's good? Not gonna lie, Ron is starting to worry me. Yeah, I don't know what's going on right now, man. Uh, they are ridiculous, bro. Why would you why are you gonna let Settle go if you weren't gonna resign pain? Just wasted time and draft picks. Get a three or five now for pain. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's going to be like a third and a fifth, something like that. I think hopefully we get a third at this point. We got some dumb. I say we draft a quarterback in later rounds, especially if we acquire more picks like Caleb LB or Bailey Zappi. I can see that maybe in the seventh, sixth. If Ritter QB falls to the second and we have a chance but draft Hamilton in the first, would you bypass receiver to get Ritter? Now, I'm not that high on Ritter like a lot of other people do. For me, it's like Malik Willis or wait till next year, honestly. I mean, I kind of like Kenny Pickett, um, but I don't know. Just over over the past few weeks, I've started to like Pickett less and less. It's not even like I've watched him and started to see more negatives or anything. I just, I don't know. I'm just already, I guess because I'm so enamored with Kyle Hamilton and so many top players at different position groups that, like, if we're going to take quarterback as Malik Willis or just wait till next year, probably. I mean, who knows? Maybe Carson Wentz works out, but I'm not, be I'm not betting on it. Ron been scaring me since he had a chance to keep Trent Williams and decided to give him the middle finger. <laughs> what do you think about John Mechie? I like John Mechie a little bit, but if we're talking about second round receivers, I do prefer a higher ceiling guy. I prefer a Christian Watson. I, of course, I prefer a George Pickens. Um, it's hard for me to put Alec Pierce over John Mechie, but I don't know. I just like the, I like the ceiling, man. I, I, second round, I'm, I prefer to lean more towards ceiling. Um, if Sauce was a Georgia Bulldog, maybe you could stop Jamison. Maybe. Yeah, maybe, bro. We need him. I think I definitely feel like Sauce Gardner was easily the best corner in college football last year. And so maybe, maybe that that's like a, a unstoppable force meeting an immovable object or something like that. Or unstoppable object meeting an immovable. I don't know. Whatever one of those. However you said. I think I said it right the first time. I don't know how that would go, honestly. Sauce covering Jamison Williams. I'm gonna need to see that at the NFL level. Once Jameson Williams gets healthy, I need to see that. I think all the pain stuff is just Ben Standig being the homie and helping us with some trade back smoke. Okay, interesting. And that was like week one. And Trim Williams was not going to re-sign. Yeah, that was over with. It was good. Reggie Reg. Jay Willer was good. Free smoke was adding. Draft the best player available. Yes, I basically. And I just think Kyle Hamilton is the best player available <laughs> that's going to be there at 11 no matter what. He's a slot corner out of Houston. Oh, okay, okay. Now, I haven't really peeped corners like that like that. I'm not going to lie. Trent said he was trying to re-sign, but Ron put him off and was meeting with dudes like Greg Olson over meeting with him. Really? I never heard about that. Would you want Jordan Battle next year? Uh, Hold on. Who is... Why do I recognize that name? Hold on. 
Jordan Battle is oh the safety from Alabama. I don't know. I haven't watched crazy tape on him. Um, I mean, as a Georgia Bulldog fan playing against him, I don't remember being afraid of him. So I guess we'll see. Um, drop the link of Trent saying that was good. The dazzling urban night was good. Was good. We got 134 people in here, man. I appreciate y'all. Please leave a like if you haven't, man. We just talking draft. I'm gonna open up the phone once I catch up on the comments at least a little bit. I'm going to open up the phone lines for y'all to call in. We'll probably do some mock drafts. Just chilling. Probably stream for like an hour or something. Maybe a little over an hour. Do you, I would do back for where we at. Look into it, man. His agent was reaching out to media and everything after Bruce Allen got fired and Ron took over GM. I would do backflips so we could trade back and get extra picks and still get Jamison Williams. Yeah, that's a home run scenario for me as well. Do you think the Hamilton 11 and Pickens at... Is a chance at 47 to go wide receiver 11 and a guy like Jaquan Britt. No, I think literally Hamilton, if you some, I don't know how you do it, but if you walk away with Kyle Hamilton and George Pickens, I feel like that's literally best, best case scenario. So just automatically, I don't think you can really do any better than that. For me, in my opinion, that's just, I think that's a home run hit. So they're willing to work it out. Do you think they'll trade back? If all if everybody they like, like Drake London and Kyle Hamilton are gone by 11, I think it's quite likely. You think Dan getting out of this situation? I have no idea, man. I don't even really be reading into that. To me, it's just like either he's fired or he's not. He's forced to sell the team or he's, or he's not forced to sell the team. I don't even be like reading all the articles that come out every two weeks. Like I, It's just whatever it happens, it happens. If it don't, oh, well, hopefully we can work around him being here. People are selling that. Oh, yeah. It got from Germany. But has football experience. It could be a good addition at safety. Also, let's check his RBS. All right. So we're talking about RASs. Let's see what's going on. Let's go over here. Marcel Debo. Let's see what's going on. Because I don't know who this is. You you put me on right now. I, I don't know who that is. Check the RAS. Do they have? Do I? Can I just Google it real quick, or I need to go to the RAS website? I still don't know how to work the RAS website. So if you can finesse it and then put like the link to this exact player in the thing, I'll bring it up, Rich. But I don't know how to finesse the RAS situation, like how to use that website and do all of that. Uh, let me see if I can find anything on it now. Watch the nation. What's good, Big Simple? Make sure I subscribe to my boy. The way you're talking about not being able to hate Jamison Williams, how I feel about Carson Strong. His injuries really suck for him. Was a fan of his pretty early. Yeah, I think Carson Strong, I think his injuries have been blown out of proportion from that information I heard from listening to uh, Brett Coleman in his podcast. He was like talking, to, um, the guy that's on there with him was basically talking about how the Carson Strong injury situation with his leg is like blown completely, completely out of proportion. Um, and so I'm more optimistic about Carson Strong today than I was like a month ago. I think he'll end up being a really good quarterback. I'm not going to lie. But it, it, quarterbacks, especially for all of these players we're talking about, situation matters. But for quarterback, it super does. Dax Mill might be seen in the slot a lot this year. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, that one fumble he had sucked, but he showed flashes. I like Alec Pierce later. Bo Melton and super sleeper Tanner Connor. Let me write these down. You know what I'm saying? Let me write these down, my boy Washington Commander. Not playing with him, not playing with him. Make sure y'all subscribe to him too, my man. My boy Washington Command Center. Make sure y'all subscribe to my boy. If we trade back with the Chiefs and get Daxton and Pickers, you think we get Muma in the second? Uh, no, that's that's too good. They're not, the, the, the draft isn't going to let us do that. Now, that's too much. That would be wonderful, but they ain't about to let us get away with that one, Jaden. Thoughts on Channing Tindall or Quay Walker? It depends on what you like. I think between the three, Channing Tindall, N'Kobe Dean, and Quay Walker, I think Channing Tindall is the most versatile. Like, he can go anywhere. But I feel like depending on where N'Kobe Dean goes, where Channing Tindall goes, where Quay Walker goes, either one of them can end up being the best linebacker out of the three. Um, but I think Channing Tindall is your safest bet because he can cover, he can run stop, he's crazy athletic, one of the most athletic players in this whole draft regardless of position group. Um, and he's, he's agile. I just think, I think it's harder to miss with Channing Tindall out of those three guys. I feel like he's the, the higher floor, the safest bet, but it all depends. Like if N'Kobe Dean goes and plays behind a really, really good defensive line, like, you know, like may say, say N'Kobe Dean slides like JOK slid last year. Ravens take um, my boy Jordan Davis and gets N'Kobe Dean later. Like, maybe they trade back up into the first to get him. 
You know what I'm saying? Now, now Nicobe Dean's about to be a perennial pro bowler because that crazy defensive line is going to keep him clean all day. He, all he got to do is just go out there and use his speed and his intelligence. He doesn't have to worry about banging with the big guys, the the guards, the centers, the tackles. So it's, it's really situational, but I think Channing Tindall is the safer bet out of the three. I'm not going to lie. I think Brisker could be really good at that Buffalo nickel spot. Jaquan, yeah, I think that could. That's, I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point. Trade back with Chiefs, get both first. Trade Deron Payne, our, our first, and Landon Collins. Interesting. If Hamilton not on the board, get back. I repeat, get back. Yeah, basically for me too. I'm same way because I don't think we're going to take Jamison Williams at 11. So you miss out on Cal Hamilton, I'm like, go ahead and trade back as well. Linebacker you like? I like a lot of them. I like my Georgia guys, of course, like I just said, but I like Chad Muma a lot. I like Leo Chanel a lot. Uh, let me see if I'm missing anybody from even just the list that we've met with. I'm not a big fan of Christian Harris. Like they're saying Troy Anderson may go in the third. Christian Harris may go in the second. I like Troy Anderson more than I like Christian Harris straight up even at the same pick. Y'all y'all can't forget my boy Darian Bevers. I like him a lot as well. So we would get a certain defensive lineman from Georgia. <laughs> Talking about Jordan Davis. We live was good, was good, my boy Big Simple. Quay Walker will be better than Muma. I can see that. He's far more athletic, crazy. Quay's Walker ceiling is crazy. I'm late, but are we really trading pain and drafting defensive tackle? I heard they like Jordan Davis. I hope not. And Georgia Bulldog, but I hope not. Ron Smoker rocks, fellas. Even though we don't need a tight end, I like the one from UCLA, Greg Dolchich. I think you could argue Greg Dolchich has the highest ceiling out of this class. Between him and Jelani Woods, you could definitely say have the two highest ceilings out of this tight end class. So I would love to get either one of those later. I know a lot of people like Trey McBride early in the draft, and I like him too, but I prefer to just take a chance on the Greg Dolchers later. Dolchers, however you pronounce it. Trey back in the first, still draft Olave. Trey back in the second, draft Petri. Use extra draft capital for third rounder and pick next year. That's interesting. Don't love that, but I wouldn't hate that. That's a, that's a cool strategy. I think that's smart. I do not like Ritter. He's my QB7. I don't even know where Ritter is in my QB rankings. I just know it's Malik Willis or nobody for me at this point. Maybe Carson Strong later. Pickett, Wonderlick score is so low. Dude is a dumb. Is it really? I didn't even look at those. I thought we stopped doing those. Jeremy Record and Jelani Woods are my two tight ends I'm really high on. I haven't gotten to watch a lot of Jeremy Record, but I like Jelani Woods a lot. I love Quay Walker. I do too. That's my dog. Wonder Lick is a waste. Yeah, I don't. I thought I thought they got rid of that. I thought we were done. Ryan Leaf had a high Wonder Lick. <laughs> Trade back with Pittsburgh for 20 and 57. Down to do that. Colt McCoy too. I think best case scenario draft, we get cut. Comp compete with somebody and get 29, 30, and 62. Daxton, Petre, and Chanel at 47 and get best receiver at 62. Actually, I really like that scenario right there. I'm actually really high on that. I like that. If we could pull that off, I like that scenario a lot. Only thing is, I don't like Petre as much as probably y'all do. So I would probably say take best receiver with the pick that you're saying get Petre with and then, you know, address another need at 62. But Daxon Hill, Leo Chanel, a receiver somewhere in between. And, yeah, that, hey, that scenario is crazy. Bama safety, thank you. You had to go look him up. Do you think it's best to go best player available? I'm, yeah, I'm BPA straight up this year. I mean, we do have needs at safety. We have needs kind of receiver. We have needs kind of running back. But just take the best player available and keep moving. Battle is nice. If we get Lewis Seed at free safety, would you? I like Lewis Seed a lot, but I don't feel like he's a pure free safety. Battle is going back to Bama. And Rico has a 50-year-old dude. What's good, Marcus? I truly think some of the front office mishaps are a result of these dudes not as sharp as they particularly may have been in earlier years. Oh, they're growing old. You getting a little C they getting a little C now. Jordan does have a bit of targeting problem, but that's it. Ron should set him up straight. Who are the three players you want us to draft at 11? Kyle Hamilton, number one, Jamison Williams, probably 1A, 1B. Uh, third, I don't know. I just don't love anybody like that at 11, man, to be honest. I mean, if for some crazy, unimaginable way that Sauce Gardner falls there, then that's my third. Other than that, I don't really love Alave, Wilson, London, any of those guys enough to take them at 11. I like all of those guys, but not enough to take them at 11. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Kyle Hamilton, Jamison Williams, and 
the impossible sauce gardener scenario who are you oh yeah i just answered that packers are in love with picking so he will not be there for these yeah no he's not making it past the packers chiefs bills not making it past any of them my uh my boy dave in dc appreciate the donation i know i'm a little late but appreciate that a lot man i'm behind on the comments as y'all can see great content first draft i have no idea zero who we will pick in any round same here that's what's kind of making it fun Thursday and Friday will be very fun. I like Jay Williams and Walker in the second. Strike some fear. Okay, so you're going straight offense. Just straight explosive offensive power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all know I'm a huge Jamison Williams fan. And I just went on a whole rant earlier about it. What's good, Daniel? I do know one thing. The day Dan Snyder is gone will be holiday for years to come in the DMV. All right, so when we hit 7 o'clock, I'll start taking um, calls. We'll start doing calls. Y'all can call in at 7 for now, I'm trying to do my best to catch up, but if anything, I'm only falling further and further behind in the comment section because there's so much going on. I'm trying to get to everybody. My boy, the Hawk with the donation. Please appreciate that super chat wave. I appreciate that big time. Again, I'm sorry. My retainer got me talking crazy, but we working on it. My boy, DMV Sports Zone in the building. Make sure y'all go subscribe to my boy, man. Crazy content doesn't have anywhere near as many subscribers as he should have man go support my boy dmv sports zone man fellow alabama fellow alabama fan but it's cool though you know what i'm saying it's cool at the end of the day we formed together because you know will anderson's from atlanta so that's my gift to him and uh hopefully jameson williams is his gift to us as the burgundy and gold all right marcel devil let's look at this all right so we're talking about strong safety from germany let's look ran a 4-4-2 at six foot 210 pounds that's crazy that's crazy he benched 21 that's crazy a 40.5 vert with a 11 0 3 broad jump who is this guy rich hold on i'm sorry i can't even see it that well let me move it to the side a little bit who is this guy who is this guy what's happening to everybody that's joining in man Hey, hey, you said who's the Kyle Duggar or Jeremy Chin type of this of this year? It might be your boy, Marcel Dapper. <laughs> it might be him on the screen that you just sent. Who is this guy? Jalen Petrie. Oh, my fault. I'll keep Petray. <laughs> um, yeah, I I'm missing a lot of comments. I'm trying to keep up with everything, but yeah, Jelani Woods has a crazy catch radius. I agree. Who is the best receiver to help scary Terry? If we're talking about somebody that's a different build, of course um of course it's got to be um um drake london if we're talking about somebody with a completely different play style maybe christian watson george pickens um but i mean that's just all depending on what you want because i mean if you want if you want to match terry McLaurin with more speed on the other side i can see garrett wilson it did but that's and that's my thing the reason why i feel like take a receiver at 11 11 isn't necessary you could trade back and get one wait till later whatever because it's just literally what do you want what do you want because none of these i feel like the only receiver separating themselves is like true star potential from everybody else is jamison williams after that i feel like if you want a big body receiver you get drake london if you want speed you get garrett wilson chris olave you, if you want big body athletic but kind of raw christian watson alec pierce you can kind of throw in there. you know what i'm saying like i just feel like there isn't a big gap after Jamison Williams, I feel like the gap between every other receiver is so marginal, you might as well just wait to get them till later. Me personally, I just don't love those Ohio State guys as much as everybody else. I think they'll all be really good, and if I had to pick between the two, I'll take Garrett Wilson because of his ceiling. And, I mean, just the way he can catch the ball. Like, somebody his size shouldn't, be, shouldn't have a catch radius like that. Like, it just shouldn't be. He's out here playing like he's 6'5". It's, it's crazy. Um, but I just, I don't know. Jameis Williams, the only guy that I'm like, bro, I will take him at 11 if I have to. Everybody else is like, I'll wait and see what happens. Um, we agree on top two guys for us. Stingley equals number three. I can see that. I can see that. Stingley still does have a lot of, uh, potential. A lot of, cause for him, it's not even like he's necessarily raw, but there are some things that because he's been hurt the past couple of years, he hasn't been able to fix. But I think Derek Stingley, if he can stay healthy and develop, man, he's going to be something crazy. I feel that. I just prefer, I think, I just, Sauce Gardner's my guy, man. He's my favorite corner in the draft. I felt like that for a minute now. And even going back and really watching tape, he's, I mean, I, it's hard to say generational talent. But, like, Sauce Gardner is, like, is that good to me. I think he's going to be the closest thing we get to a shutdown corner. 
for I think you could argue he's one of the best corner prospects coming out of the draft in a couple of years. Like I'm I'm that high on Sauce Gardner. I think he's that amazing. That Cincinnati team was loaded, bro. If you really look at it, Darian Bevers, the running back they barely used that I want us to get. I forgot his name already. Starts with a J, I believe. Um, and then just Desmond Ritter, the edge rusher, Sauce Gardner. And even what's his name on the opposite side wasn't bad, but teams kept throwing it towards him because you, you're not going to throw it towards Sauce Gardner. You're, literally, you, you're just not going to do that. Darian Bevers, like I already said, I mean, that team was loaded, bro. Alec Pierce was slept was slept on until like the past couple of months. That team was crazy, bro. Jer Jerome Ford, thank you. Start with a J. Thank you, bro. I, I like him a lot, too. I just feel like they didn't use him enough. And yeah, man, of course, DMV, my boy DMV Sports Zone, man, every time. What's going on, bro? What's good, Broderick? Uh, we need to draft Darian Bevers with the fourth round pick from Cincinnati. I love Darian Bevers, man. That I, I was almost willing to take him with the second pick, maybe. But I think he may slide at least to the third. The problem is we don't have a third. Where Malik Willis is there at 11 because they cannot, because they can get out of Carson. Y'all know me. I want I still want Malik Willis. I've just already accepted the fact that it's a 99.99% chance that we aren't taking him. So to this point, I'm like, Malik Willis, please go to the Steelers. That's just my whole energy for that. I, I want him to go out there and become a Hall of Famer. I want him to be the best quarterback in the NFL. But again, it's for not just because of his talent, but for biased reasons as well. Why I'm rooting for Malik Willis so heavy. If they don't get Hamilton and he's there, I'll snap. Yeah, I'll be pretty sad. I ain't going to lie. I feel like it's going to hurt just like that. Uh, the Brandon Sheriff draft. I didn't know Leonard Williams was going to fall as far as he did. And when it was our pick, I was like, oh, yeah, we got Leonard Williams. I ain't even expect him to be here. Then we took Brandon Sheriff. And it worked out really well for us to for, for the most part. But, like, that same pain that if we if Leonard Williams, like how Leonard Williams fell to us in that draft and we didn't take him, I would feel kind of the same way with Kyle Helmut. So that 11, and we don't take him, Derwin James, the Deron Payne year. I wanted Derwin James so bad, and then he fell to us. I was like, oh, he's here. We could get him. And then we didn't take him, bro. Bro, so anticlimactic, bro. I was, I was sick, bro. I ain't going to lie. I was super sick, man. I had his schedule. Same way for our top people sleep on Jameson. Should be healthy. Start a regular season. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Denby Sports Zone. I'm already knowing, man. That, man. that man, Jameson Williams, is ahead of schedule with his torn ACL. And even if he wasn't. To me, he's literally wide receiver one easily. I don't even feel like it's a debate. I would wait even if he wasn't ahead of schedule on his torn ACL recovery. But then on top of that, um, like you just sent me, and like I've been seeing, like he's ahead of schedule. I bet Jamison Williams going, bro. I'm please don't go to the NFCs. That's all I hope. Who's the Kyle Duggar? Yeah, I'm just right there, right there, right there, right there. Where are we at? Did a mock trade every pick for a new owner? <laughs> <laughs> also, don't forget Terry let the league and contested catches. If we did draft London with Wentz, would have no excuse because he would definitely get bailed out on a lot of bad throws. Good point. I know I'm a lone ranger, but I have watched the entire games versus Clemson 2020 versus Bama 2020. Kyle Hamilton is not that dude. Rico, please do a live show on Hamilton versus both slow and weak tackling. Okay, Marcus Pinnell, hot topic. Hot opinion, hot opinion. I'm so big on how did you just say pronounce his name because I legit think he's an elite tier Cam Crow coming. I like Cam's elite. It was low key, but does an elite level already. A little smaller, but better athletically. Yeah, we do. That's a good point too, because we gotta remember Cam Crow is not very athletic at all. He's actually pretty average in every athleticism metric there is. He's just really smart. He just balls out. He just knows how to play the game. So I can see the argument where like, yeah, you take. You take um, I can uh, Mr. P take Mr. the safety Mr. P and <laughs> and then basically he's like another camera curl but more athletic. But like you said, a little bit smaller too. I like Jerome Ford. Honestly, let's just mess around RES a little bit, see what we can find. Just send me some links and I'll pull them up. Georgia's D was loaded. You can make all Georgia players and have an amazing defense. <laughs> well, I appreciate the compliment. When's the last time we drafted a receiver in the first or second besides Docks? And if Wilson is on the board, it should be a no-brainer. I think Wilson will have a Calvin Ridley type of rookie year. I can see that. Middle linebacker Walker, free safety Nick Cross, tight end Jelani Woods, Watson, guard Haynes, and running back Zamir White. Okay, that's a solid draft. I like that's a solid draft. 
Um, the other corner on the other side of sauce was yeah, Kobe Bryant. There we go. That's because I was like, his name is Kobe Bryant, isn't it? But it's just spelled different, bro. He was getting toe up, and it was not his fault. Peace tree. Okay, P tree. Okay, I got that. I got that. Thank you. Thank you. I got it. I'm. I'm gonna remember that. Um. Yeah, no, nah, it wasn't fair, bro. Kobe Bryant, the corner for uh, Cincinnati, he's not even that bad. But again, the way that the modern football is set up, a good quarterback with a good receiver and a good throw is going to beat a good corner with good coverage every time. And they just kept throwing it towards him because you're not going to throw it at Sauce Gardner. I heard um, somebody's podcast was talking about how like there was one college team that Cincinnati went against last year. And they literally decided we're going to put our worst receiver on Sauce Gardner because it doesn't matter if we put our best receiver or our worst someone or whatever. It doesn't matter. We're not going to throw it that way anyway because Sauce Gardner is going to lock him up. So we might as well not even throw our good receiver at him. We might as well just go ahead and throw our worst receiver at Sauce Gardner and try to take advantage of mismatches over here. So that's what that's the type of stuff Kobe Bryant was dealing with. And even then, he still wasn't that bad. And at the very least, you can say it's battle. he's battle-tested. So I think Kobe Bryant gets a lot more hate than he deserves. Uh, me too. Uh, I am too huge on Petrie. He is that dude, strong, fast, and a dog. Kyle Hamilton round two. John Mechie, Kalen Barnes, Caleb Elby. I'm not even... Is that Zaquandre White? <laughs> I, I'm not... <laughs> is that really his full name, bro? Who is the? I don't know who that is. I do not know who Zakonja is. Josh Seals, you lost me with that one. But again, I haven't been looking at running backs like that. I just happened to be watching Cincinnati tape, looking at Desmond Ritter, saw Jerome Ford. I was like, who is this? Why did they not use him more? My dad also wanted Vita Vea. I wanted Vita Vea, Vita Vea over um, over Deron Payne at the time as well. I mean, hindsight, I don't know, but definitely that day. My my big board was Derwin James, then Vita Vea for sure. Uh, Mr. P <laughs> Petrie, let's get these likes up. Yeah, please like the stream if you haven't already. So special is a nickel prospect. We need one. He's a former three-star linebacker because of size became and became an elite slot corner with a linebacker mentality in the run. I like that analysis. I like that. You kind of selling me on him a little bit more. Curl is good. We need to utilize him the same way we did with we did when he was a rookie. I agree. One, two, three, watch it and take a second hit like that like button. Man, thank you, man. Appreciate it, man. Definitely leave a like on the stream. I appreciate y'all. Looking back, what was that? Looking back, Deron over Derwin James might be the biggest L. Man, this might not even be with us in the next two years. Yeah, it's a little ugly, Nico. Rigo, what do you think of some of the HBCU players being drafted? Hey, I want all of them too. My dog from Atlanta. Well, technically Gwinnett. What was the number one player name? I can't even remember his name right now. He was originally going to go to Florida State. Now he's over there where Deion Sanders over there at Jackson State. Um, I love that type of stuff. And like a lot, how a lot of basketball players are going to HBCU schools. Because at the end of the day, you're going to get drafted. I mean, it would be nice to go play for Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, all of these places where you have better facilities and stuff like that. But when you're literally the number one recruit in the nation, you can go to any school and Teams are going to keep track of what you got going on. And when in doubt, maybe he can spend a year or two there and transfer it to a bigger school at the end or something like that. You know okay. what I'm saying? Either way, I like this movement okay. of a lot of players, a lot of top players going to HBCUs. I love that. And I think, hey, man, draft as many of them as you can because it's a lot of famous Hall of Famers that were went to HBCUs. Like, I think Michael Strahan went to, H went to an HBCU. It's a lot of them. Um, Jerry Rice. Uh, my favorite running backs in this draft are Ty Chandler or Keontae mm -hmm. Ingram for roundness and Xander Horvath or Brian Robinson for that power we need. Okay, I can see that. I don't, I, the only one out of that group I don't know is Xander Horvath. Again, I haven't really checked in the running back that deep this year. I've been super quarterback, receiver, safety. I dove a little bit into offensive line. I haven't really been in the running back. Oh, and linebacker. But I haven't really been in, on uh, running back like that. So there's some guys out there. I'm like, who? When they get drafted. Or if they get drafted later. I was Because we didn't take DK at 15. I want a DK too. Do you think right, Ron takes strong if we get a third round trading back? I could definitely see that. I like Panay Sewell's brother, nephew. If we want to draft a linebacker late, interesting. 
I think we should take Stingley, Hamilton, and Sauce if they're there. If not, trade back wide receiver. I'm also in love with George Pickens. You know me, man. So am I. We're going to just go to RES Football and wait for the player field to the load. RES Football. All right. Well, let me hurry up and try to do that real quick. And then we're going to get to... uh. We're going to get... Because, like, I just don't feel like putting in a whole bunch of... Like, can we just... Can we go to people's names? Because I do not want to... Uh, I don't want to uh, have to put in all those stats because, I mean, we have so many comments, too. Oh, yeah, Travis Hunter. Thank you. Thank you. That's the name, Travis Hunter. Really hope we can end up with George Pickett. Same here. All right, let me go ahead and start opening up the phone lines, though. I said we open it up at 7, so let's go ahead and start bringing those calls in. Oh, that's the wrong picture. What's the other picture? There we go. Go ahead and start bringing those calls in. I mean, we can have this up. We can have that up, whichever. I guess we'll leave this up. It's the home screen. Hold on. Let me see what you're talking about before we move on. Hold on. RAS football. They just have a whole bunch of names and we can just click on them type of thing. Uh, I guess where we go, we just go with commanders. We just, we just do, well, they got football team. Why can I click on it? I'm struggling with this. Yeah. I don't want to, I just don't want to spend too much time on this. If you send like a link of a player, I'll put it, I'll pull it up. Um, you said, wait, Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. You're right. It waited. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 All right, yeah, so yeah, we'll probably look through this. I'll probably just scroll through some of these and take a look at some of them as we're... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the phone lines. Let me go ahead and bring that up. What the, we got the timer set for the three minutes. Let me go ahead and open it up. Let me go ahead and host. Join with computer audio. Yes, sir. Attendees. All right, we're good. All right, yeah, so let's go ahead and open up the phone lines. We're going to get to that. I don't hear anything, so let me restart my headset before something stupid happens. Restart the headset. Is it on? I think I just turned it off. Now I'm about to turn it back on. Best safety than the drive. These brothers don't have size now. Lettuce is on I told you about before. Mike Allsop, but faster in hands. Oh, man, that's really high praise. That's going way back, too. Mike Allsop, man, I used to... Was that NFL Street I had him on? Some one of them games I had him on. I was having the time of my life. He wasn't even the best safety in the Big Ten Hill. <laughs> and I'm, I'm a huge Daxton Hill fan, man. Shannon Sharp, Walter Payton, Darius Leonard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of those, man. Thank you, Captain. All right, but yeah, man, I got the phone. I got the phone lines open up. Anybody want to call in? We can talk draft. I know Washington Command Center, he was one of the main ones that wanted to do it, so we're going to definitely get him on. Oh, Hawks heat coming up. Let me go ahead and pull that up so I can have that to the side. I'm sorry. Did not mean to play that out loud. Let me go ahead and meet that. I was watching the T-Pain podcast. I just watched Carlos Miller. Now I'm about to pull up the uh, country. I'm watching the country Wayne now. Do you think we take quarterback round two, if any, on board? All right, my boy Astonishing pulled up. Let me go ahead. How you doing over there, man? Doing good. How you doing? What's good? What's good? My boy Washington Command Center in the chat. Uh, let me go. First of all, y'all need to subscribe to him. And I'm going to go ahead and pin hit one of his most recent comments so y'all can know who's on the phone right now. All right. Yeah. And again, make sure I subscribe to my boy, man. What's good, man? What you got? Man, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think they should be able to hear you, too. I can hear you as well. Man, I cannot wait until this draft. Excited, man. First, man, like I'm telling you, I love Petrie. I think he is the perfect prospect for us. Why are you talking about him? I'm going to pull but, him up, too. But, you can keep going. Like, I was just uh, saying that. Getting hung up on, uh, on the Buffalo nickel, though, with this defense. And like Ron said in the interview yesterday, like, it's not just a buffalo nickel it's the nickel position in general and like i think a lot of us fans are kind of looking at the position with landon collins in mind when we should be looking at it with cameron curl in mind like you play nickel to be strong in the slot be strong against the pass you want somebody who can, can cover in the slot but Ron Rivera having that linebacker mentality, 
he doesn't want to be weak against the, the run either. So a guy like Petrie, I think, is perfect. He had the most defensive stops in a power five. He's Like I said, he's, he's a linebacker recruit and turned himself into an elite coverage uh, slot corner. So I just don't think there's anybody that fits better than him. I mean, you know, I was pounding the table for Kyle Hamilton back at the beginning of the season. I was talking about tanking for him after week four. <laughs> but that's when I thought that's when I thought he was Derwin James. Like that's when I thought he could play like all three levels of the field. I don't think he's gonna be a free safety. If he can't do that, that's kind of what we needed him for. And then from the nickel position, I don't think he's a good slot coverage guy either. Like, he gets burned out of the slot a lot at the college level. So, I think when he comes to the NFL, he's going to be a elite will linebacker that can just erase tight ends or he can go in the box and just completely shut down runs. He'll surprise you there. But I just don't think Kyle Hamilton is what I thought he was at least. And if he's there at 11, I think it's just better trade bait for us to move back. Yeah, I definitely think uh, every day that passes, I think we're more likely to trade back. Like every time I think about it and what players may be there and how many teams want to go and get certain guys, I I'm I think we're going to end up trading back. I hope people like are prepared for that because I know a lot of people don't want us to, but I think we will end up trading back. Yeah, I think it's crazy that some people just act like trading back is, like, completely impossible because of the quarterback class. It's like, man, the Jets traded up for a guard last year. (laughs) People are going to trade up, especially at pick 11. We're at, like, a very special place where we're going to get the top 10 runoff. Like, whoever reaches up for a player – or whoever in the top 10 reaches for a player they like, they're going to let an, a top 10 player slide right to where we are, and somebody's going to want them. And I've been, like, hammering this Kansas City thing home because not only – they got rid of Tyreek Hill. They need to replace at least some of that production because, I mean, Pat Mahomes looked kind of bad at the beginning of the year last year when they were kind of taking him away. But they need to replace some of that production and – they have 12 draft picks and an estimated, I mean, they can move money, but the estimated cost for signing their draft class is $13 million. <laughs> They have $14 million in cap space. <laughs> they have four, and they have $14 million in cap space. So it would make more sense for them to package up two or three picks, come up and get quality over quantity, try to replace the best wide receiver in the NFL with, I don't know, Jamison uh, Williams. And uh, it would it would just that would be scary. make so much more sense. They come up and get elite. We get the best picks. And as far as 29 and 30 are almost exact value for 11. But the team trading up always has to give plus value. So I think at least 94 would have to go with that. I can see that. Okay, so like those two first, and then we also end up getting what, like a fourth? You said third, thirdish. Third, a third. That's a third. But if if Green Bay is competing with them to come up, then plus I really think Ben Standig did us a solid with Deron Payne. Now, when Kansas City calls, we're going to be able to say, "Hey, the Ravens are on the line. They're worried we're going to take a defensive tackle." If they want to come up, they're going to give us such and such. You know, we're going to have more leverage with people thinking Deron Payne's leaving when they aren't taking into consent. Like, fans are just, like, listening to this and not treating it as smoke. Like, we didn't extend Allen until July last year. There was right, the day before. No, no, the day of training camp, like the morning of or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, there was no reason for, for that information about pain to be offered up at all. There was no reason for Deron Payne not being extended to, like, hit the news now. 
other than we wanted it to happen and it's smoke to give us more ammo and like trade backs now that's an that's an inception that's level awesome. of of trade leverage because just say that because deron Payne may leave and maybe we'll take jordan davis so now the ravens want a guy and we'll use that to trade back with kansas city that is hey man i i like that i mean like I, i'm with you with the whole trade back get those two first i like that but but yeah that's the way like there there's not a team behind us that i can't think of a reason they wouldn't want to trade up depending on who gets to us you know like there there's there's a reason for everybody to trade up so i don't see why people are so dismissive of it like my uh offense say uh Akimakwanu slides to us you tell me there aren't 17 teams behind us oh calling us? yeah you can like, argue he's the best offensive line like, prospect in the draft he oh yeah or even evan neal whoever who mm -hmm. they're uh soft partner whoever if any of the top any of those top 10 guys can very easily be there and that opens up trade backs with everybody and then the ones we expect to be there already do too. Like, just the wide receivers open that up. There's just so many people. Uh, Malik Willis. If Malik Willis is there, we know we got, you know, the Steelers probably. Mm -hmm. Possibly the Saints. So I prefer the Steelers just, just for his sake. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's just like there's whoever gives us the most, okay? Yep. The, yeah, 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 true. Saints are willing to give us both first. I don't know. Dude, what do they? Crazy, they have like sixteen and nineteen think, or something like that. What do they have? Yeah, there's no reason. There's no way we're getting both their first, but value wise, but like Green Bay value wise, it's ridiculous too. Twenty two and twenty eight. But then when you think about, they might be competing. They we could squeeze them for that maybe mm -hmm. that would be best possible case scenario then we're guaranteed to get daxton hill you know please but i would love to get daxton hill i see my time i see my time's been over so uh you take it easy and uh i'll be there draft day oh yeah man we gonna be in here laughing it up and all oh, kind of brother draft is so unpredictable this is gonna be so fun man so you definitely pull up and i appreciate you calling in i'm gonna start live streaming more often especially after the draft because we'll have way more to talk about we'll be reviewing our draft and all of that type of stuff so man i'll definitely keep them phone lines open i mean you're one of the main reasons i thought to make sure i included the the phone calls this time because you you hit me up in the comment section i was like man well you, you gotta let yeah, me call man. in so okay. i had to had to do it for my boy. I was expect I was expecting you the other day when you said you you're gonna live stream yesterday. Yeah, I thought I, I meant to. Yeah, I, I meant I just been super yeah, like, busy. Uh, it's it's been crazy. That's why I haven't oh, even been man, able to do been, my film I've sessions. I've been working on the the my like final draft video to get it out. Mm -hmm. And I was like working on it like hours and I needed sleep and I was like, man, Rico's supposed to stream today i wanted to call in and i waited <laughs> and i waited and i waited i was like man i gotta go to sleep yeah that's my fault but i but i appreciate you calling in man like i said yeah we're gonna definitely we got these live streams going after this during the draft of course thursday through at least rounds one through four um if we get a fifth round pick i'll probably live stream through the fifth round as well and then afterwards we gotta do reviews and everything so and also i want to do a live stream just to check up on everybody to see how we feel about the the new name the new logo the new jerseys now that we've had a few months to let it settle in so i got a bunch of stuff coming up and we're gonna definitely take calls on all of those so man i appreciate you calling in again man man this draft so deep we better get some mid-round picks <laughs> Yeah, not having a third and a fifth hurts right now. I feel stupid. <laughs> All right, man. Take All right, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have an 804 number. Who's this? Uh, it's Coach. Call me Coach, baby. Oh, bet, 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 bet. Hold on. Let me type that in. Got you saved in. What's good, man? Ain't nothing much, man. I've been—I'm a big fan of your of your show and everything, and I appreciate, appreciate all that. your hard work and everything you do. 
But uh, I'm going to try to be quick and to the point, man. I've been coaching uh, high-level college football for over the, over the past 15 years. And uh, it's funny, man, that what's going on, to touch on with the, the caller calling before, we're so dismissive about um, – about jumping back in the draft and, and getting more draft picks is that your fans don't trust the organization. If you go off the past history, just no one trusts the organization and the decisions that's made, uh, all the star players that's been picked or skipped over by our organization. So it's a lot going on that fans are scared of and don't just trust the organization to make the right decision. So like, like for granted, take this. If Washington has 11th pick, and let's just say Kyle Hamilton is on the still on the board. He probably won't be, but Kyle Hamilton's on the board. You got Drake on the board. Drake London on the board. You'll have Olave on the one of the two. One of the, you don't matter which one Ohio State guys you have. One of the two, and you have both linebackers and Lloyd and Dean. And I feel like they're the pieces type of organization. You have all that talent on the board, and they'll probably pick Drake London. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. So that's why a lot of fans are, are, don't feel comfortable about it. Now, I think that right now, if Drake London is truly your number one receiver on the board, right, you got to you gotta move back because he's going to be there after 11. No, no one. We're probably the only organization in the league that has Drake London as a top receiver on the board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, right? I'm serious. Now, okay, if you want a big, strong receiver that's fast and a gadget guy, like if you want an A.J. Brown or Debo Samuel type, correct? So let's say you got Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor. You got who I love is Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks, yep. Uh, From the SEC, too. Um, who else is another? Yeah, and uh, it's another big receiver. Oh, Jameson. So you got a 6'3 guy, you got a 6'2 guy that both runs pretty good on the field. Traylon Burks is a lot faster on game film. I think he just didn't prepare, bro, because, yeah, he's way more athletic than he tested. Way more athletic on that on the field. Oh, man, he is a monster on the field. And I've seen this young man in person on the fo across the football field from him. And he is no joke. And you can get it out of him. I mean, you even can use him since we have – say you got tight end issues. The guy is six foot three, almost six foot four, and he weighs 230, 235 pounds. You can line him up in a flex. You can – offset him as a tight end or H back. You can do a lot of things with the guy. He's big, he's talented. You don't have to do any and it can help out until local Thomas get back or you can find a tight end. Uh so that's my whole thing about Washington commanders right now is that you can't trust them. You got two GMs in the front office. You got Drawn whose coaching staff needs to be revamped like yesterday. And it's just crazy. Even goes down to the organization playing this political game. Everybody talks about the running back wrong. How about you had Coach Jordan has been our coach for years, and you and you let him go for a coach that really, I mean, I'm I'm not. I mean, a lot of people may not agree with me, but I think what they're doing in the running back room and who they picked as coach that's very detrimental. <laughs> so uh, I don't look don't look for the running back group to get improved. Don't look for them to be better uh, because I think Washington as an organization, uh, they're doing a lot of political moves, a lot of things to get uh, the heat off of them and uh, mm -hmm. get attention elsewhere. So, like, uh, it's just it's just crazy. It's a lot of talent in this. It's a lot a lot of talent in this draft, and I think Washington needs to sit down. And they just need to take their time, not panic. And they need one guy calling the shots. It's uh, like I said, you got too many chiefs and not enough Indians uh, <laughs> in that front office. And then <laughs> Dan doesn't make it better with all his stuff that he's got going on with him. And so, like I said, the organization is the fan base is just is screaming for something, just something for us to. To be Believe excited it. about coming all season, <laughs> yeah, and and like I said, you if you go back, bro, like the Ryan Kerrigan pick, to this day you had Cam Jordan on the board. Oh man, it was some talent. Every year it's the same thing, same over. So like, like I just believe that they're not going to make the right choice. They're going to screw it up. And if they like, if uh, I just don't trust them, bro. I just don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but trying yeah. to tell you, man, they uh, they'll have all this talent on the board and all these needs, and they'll pick somebody just because they like how, uh, you know, that's the kind of guy. Military, like, or, military or background. 
<laughs> military background. <laughs> yeah, like characteristics, shit that don't stuff that don't translate to the football field. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, it's, it's just crazy to me. Like I said, we are the, we'll be up there Thursday night to say, please. Now, personally, personally, I think that Jamison Williams, I think Traylon Burks, I think Drake London, I think it's going to be some really good talent. But when you don't have a third and you don't have a fifth, you know, pressure break pipes. Yeah, and I, uh, we got to figure we that out. We made good decisions in the past. <laughs> And so I, I truly believe, like, if, if, if Drake London is who you really, really want, trade back, man. Ain't nobody going, ain't nobody in no race after his ass. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, that's my, that's just my opinion, because I really, I really would like for us to add some defensive, because I'm like, how much talent do you need in the wide receiver room? How much talent do you really need? And you have Carson Wentz now. Um, which I think is a is an upgrade. He's, I mean, come on. I think Carson Wentz should get you nine wins. He should yeah. get you nine wins. I think it's a floor. The floor regardless has to be seven. Look, regardless of, yeah, but more recently, like the type of talent that he brings, like even when his crazy games, Carson Wentz can get you nine games. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, I'm saying worst case scenario is literally seven based off of what oh, happened yeah, last seven year. At worst. Yeah, like it yeah, can't be worse. Seven at worst. Than seven at worst. Even like you said, in 27, at 27 and 11, like, that's not great stats, but, bro, that's playoff stats. Yeah. Any quarterback throwing on almost 30 touchdowns, you're pretty much guaranteed that you, you're in the playoffs for that year. So, um, so I just want them to, to make the wise decision and, and, and do what's right by the organization and by the fans. Because, um, you know, the fans are, are, are at their level. Like, I know a lot of fans are looking to jump on other teams, looking for other teams to cheer for. But at the end of the day, the they just don't feel right. So. Nah, nah, so yeah, I, man, I think they should. I think they should. I think they should. If, if I don't think Kyle Hamilton is going to be there uh, at 11, and I know for sure, for sure, that one of the Ohio State guys is going to come off the board before 11. So there's a strong chance you, like I said, you have Drake, you have Traylon Burks, you have a lot of talent and a lot of guys that tested high, uh, and it's just a lot of talent out there, man. Like I said, it, I think it should be uh, get back, get some picks, uh, address the defensive side of the ball. Um, middle linebacker is so important because that's the quarterback of your defense, and for me, Devin Lord checks all those boxes. Oh yeah, I he's like scheme Dean, diverse. But you could put him in anything. Yeah, I I like I like I like I like Nicobe Dean, but I'm kind of reserved with him because of his size. Yeah, you gotta protect he's him. A little undersized, like you gotta protect. Yeah, him. you gotta protect him. He he's gonna get ate up by guards all day. So I For like sure. that little. His anticipation at the middle linebacker is almost defensive back like, and he don't get enough coverage, and he don't get enough. He don't get enough uh, praise for his coverage as well. Yeah, I, f I feel like he's so another guy, like just like him. Traylon Burks, that's faster on tape than he tested. I think he ran like a four six something. I he think he's is, faster than that. Bro, can you imagine? Say, just imagine you go, uh, you go Lloyd or Dean in for the first pick, uh, or, or let's say let's uh, you got this uh, defensive tackle, uh, all this fuss going on right now, right? So you need depth. You, you can also also go Jordan Davis. I just yeah, think I that with the 11th pick, need to be a defensive pick, and if you like a receiver, a certain receiver, there's going to be there's going to be receivers there that fits that Drake London forte at your second round pick. I mm -hmm. really think they should address the defensive side of the board, and I think uh, Ron really, really at the end of the day, he really, really need to address his coaching staff. It's it's really bad, and and me being a coach and this being my profession for years on end and as much as I love this game and knowledge I have about it man like he need to revamp that staff they are old <laughs> and out of date and out of touch yeah I definitely prefer a and, younger and, and so. more innovative group bro 
<laughs> for sure. You, you do it. And, and I love Ron, but you got to understand the guys that's coming to play this game now is not like the guys that played 10, 15 years ago. Like mm -hmm. with the military mindset. Yes, sir. No, sir. I'm going to do. I'm going to run into a brick wall for you. These kids today, they got other, they got options. They got other interests. And their thing is, let me get a bag, do what I can, and get out and get other ventures in life. <laughs> yep. This is an athlete that you're dealing with now. And so you got to adjust with the times. And so, like I said, you can... You can you can keep doing what you're doing and get the same results, and that's called insanity. So. Yep, keep doing the same thing over and over again, expect so. a different result. That but is Rico, insanity. man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate your hard work. And man, I'm getting off this phone because I got to get back to work. And uh, man, one love to Commander Nation, bro. Man, appreciate you calling in, man. Appreciate you dropping jewels, man. Appreciate that big time, man. Definitely call back when we do these calls again, man. I definitely will, man. I definitely, I've been waiting for the day for you to do it, man. And I, I, like I said, I'm glad I jumped on, man. And like I said, I'm a big fan. And, and I'm, if I can help in any kind of way in the future, you know, rating players for you, whatever you need, just give me a holler, man. All right, bet, man. Appreciate it. You sound like my dog from Oklahoma, too. All right, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me bring on. We have three more callers up next, too. So let me go ahead and bring on the next one. What's good, Argo? What's good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Well, so you know how we're. So we can't. I don't think we'll be able to pay all 4D linemen as much as as much as they deserve. So I think mm -hmm. we can trade Duran paid ba trade back. Get one of the Chiefs. Or both of the Chiefs first round picks, uh, get a third out of them, then and trade uh, trade a like a sixth and a seventh to go and try and get that third to add up in there. Then we can have a third, and then then we can do our thing from there. But it, but in terms of get or who I if we were to stay at eleven, I would if in case scenario somehow Kyle Hamilton's there. Mm -hmm. That that should dream case scenario it's either i i say we either either we get a safety in this draft or we don't feel the need at all and we wait until next year for like a jordan battle or somebody like that i can see the case just like a lot of people feel like we shouldn't take quarterback this year we should wait till next year for quarterback so maybe attack quarterback and safety next year i can see that yeah yeah, then see if we can get anything about out of Javon Davis Davis before we go linebacker. Because I mean, so we're gonna cut Landon, Landon Collins later in the agency, so we don't, so he doesn't screw us as much in terms of cap space like Carson Woods is. Hey, Carson Woods is killing us right <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, like Carson Woods, I think he's a twelve mil QB max. That's if you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, and hopefully he doesn't pull a ride Fitzpatrick. I'm talking about getting hurt? Yep. <laughs> yeah, I really hope so, too, bro. At this point, again, I don't love the trade, but it's like at this point, bro, I hope it works out because we already gave up the third and fifth. We're already struggling to pay Terry, Deron Payne. We let Matt Ioannidis, Tim Settle, Eric Flowers go because he ate up all the cap space. We missed out on all of these free agents in the 2020 free agency uh, period. It's just like at this point, we did all of this to get them. I hope it works so that we don't just look crazy. If he, if he doesn't go back to his MVP days, I swear I'm gonna I'm gonna find his family and kidnap them until he plays good again. Yeah. Like his is gonna be in my attic until until he until he drops a twenty five until he has until the end of the season if he doesn't play good. Like if he doesn't if he doesn't at least provide his three and a half thousand yards and twenty five touchdowns, say goodbye. He can say goodbye to his family. <laughs> And those are low expectations expectation, uh, expectations when you have Terry McClure to throw to. Yeah, well, true. Well, he contested catch rate last year, like 98%, something stupid like that. Bruh, something just ridiculous that just makes you look at Taylor Heineke like, what were you doing? 
and then like Terry's over there, like, and then he had like what sixty percent of his uh, balls were catchable. Yeah, something it was like bro, something really bad. Like I was like, okay, okay, would I be willing to pay Russell Wilson as much as Carson Woods get, is getting right now? I would do it. I would do it. No problem. Plus, I mean, and then and then Terry would be like, I'm willing, I'm willing to like wait out on my check to have him throw me two one and a half thousand yards, ten touchdowns, and then that that would be it. And then. So we'll be good there, and then he will actually throw me a ball that's catchable, <laughs> like like legit. And then he's kind of like just a better Taylor Heideke that can actually throw the ball downfield. No, hey, we, we gonna see. But, we are definitely gonna yeah. see. <laughs> yeah, kind of sucks that he doesn't have a big tight end target anymore though, with Noah Fan. Yeah, he loved those, man. He definitely loved those, for sure. I mean, DK would probably be a good tight end. He's <laughs> like, hey, There's no way we could pay all of them. DK and Terry? Ain't no way. We struggling to pay Terry right now because of Carson Wentz. Yeah, Carson Wentz, if he takes like a $16 million pay cut, be my guest. You, your, your family won't be in my attic, Okay. <laughs> I'm currently I'm sending my boys to go get him right now so to go get his family so he better be starting to put in that work at training camp Brody Brody not right now y'all can wait let bro yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah Brody the fluffy yes sir that's my little babies over there but man I appreciate it Argo <laughs> We're going to get to the rest of these callers. I appreciate you calling in as always, man. All right. See ya. All right, man. Thank you. My boy Argo, my boy Argo. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. We got Kevin from Detroit next. What's good, Kevin? Hey, what up, though, Playboy? How you feeling, man? What's happening with you? Man, I can't call it, man. What up, though? Cooler, man. Just excited hey, about hey, this hey, draft, hey. man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but check this out, though, man. I've been a, um, I've been a Washington Redskins football team for managers for a long time. I'm 48 years old, right? And um, and that had the luxury of watching two Super Bowls. You did two Super Bowls, right? Now I'm gonna jump into 2022, right? And I'm fucked up with Ron Rivera. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 hey, hey. I'm, 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 I'm saying I'm, 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 I'm fucked up with him, man. For the summer flag year. Oh, hey, Kevin, can you uh, turn down? Can you mute the uh, stream on wherever you're watching it at? Because it's playing through the mic. Can you mute the stream? I got you. Let me cut it to you, man. Okay. Hold on one second. What is the mode that one? Hold on, hold on, Rico. Yeah, you good, you good, you good. Hold on, hold on. Is better now? Yeah, you good, you good, you good. Is it better because you know what I mean? Because I got my uh my uh AirPods on. Can you hear me better though? Yeah, I think you good now. I think we're good. I think. Uh okay, okay. Look, Ron Rivera, right? I don't understand them though, man. I I really don't, man. Um, um, I mean, Carson Wentz. I mean, he I. I mean, a lot of people is giving him bad mouth because of Philly situation, right? Because last year he played I with uh with um Indianapolis. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? He had two fucked up games. I two. Two messed up games. I understand that, right? You know what I'm saying? But I think I I, I think that I think the coaching is bad. Something, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh 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 Jamin Davis. You know what I'm saying? I think he I think he's good. You know what I'm saying? I mean, let let the man play. You know what I'm saying? Let him play. Let him, you know what I'm saying, let him get the kinks out that he need to get out. You know what I'm saying? And then Chase Young, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 
they showing Taysom, strong age, strong age Ryan Kirkin, showing him tapes. I, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that, man. Because Ryan Kirkin, <laughs> I was not a big fan of that, that big strong, strong, strong. I don't know. He, 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 he just is strong. He's just strong as shit. You know what I'm saying? He's just strong. Right? Uh, um, I don't know, man. It, it's the, 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 the coaching bad, man. The coaching is bad, man. You know what I'm saying? Then he's hiring all his Carolina boys. I don't understand it. Like, <laughs> Definitely the Washington Panthers I, I, for sure. I, I don't understand it, man. Uh, 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 I don't want none of them Ohio State. Hello? Kevin? Last thing we heard is I don't want Ohio State. Kevin, you there? Going once. Going twice. All right, when he come back, I'll let him back on. All right, we got my boy Johnny from Chicago next up. Then we got Joseph. Then we got Rich. And I'll bring Kevin back on if he comes back on. What's good, Johnny? Hey, man, what's wrong with that, Rico? I ain't talked to you since the season, man. Man, what's good, man? I've just been busy. Hey. I haven't been able to stream as much as I would like to, but I'm about to get back on it for sure. Well, that's cool, man. I'm just in Chicago, man, and join us. April cold weather, man. We still got <laughs> snow coming this way, man. This shit is crazy, man. I'm it's ready. 80s I'm over ready. here, man. You got to get up out of there. Yeah, you know what? I just came back from the Dominican Republic um, a couple of months ago. I had to go through Atlanta. I didn't even know y'all had a, a train station that, down there at the airport. I'm like, what is this? Oh, yeah. So, our airport is official, bro. It don't get no better than our airport. Yeah, I seen it, bro. It's nice. I, I, it's <laughs> nice when I went. It's real nice. But look, man, I'm not going to keep you on the phone. If Ron Rivera knew that he wasn't going to resign um, Deron Payne, why would you let go Tim Settle and Matt, and Matt Ioannidis? Th this is what I'm talking about with him. I don't know what's going on. I know Carson Winston took up $28 million of cap space. Mm -hmm. I like the move back. I like I, – you know what, Rico? I'm not going to say I don't like the move because I do. He's a a, a major upgrade from Taylor Heineken. You know that. He's oh, upgrade. Yeah. For sure. That's, that, that's the best. He was the only – Russell Wilson want to come in here and Rodgers want to come in here. I didn't want Jimmy Garoppolo. I didn't oh, want please Jimmy no. Garoppolo. Please, no. So, so Carson Wentz, what did he do? 20, he was 27 for seven last year. He had two pretty bad games. Okay. But come on, man, that, that is that that is a major upgrade. They got us around him with weapons, man. You got to give him all the weapons he he needs to succeed. That's the only way this is going to work. Because if this don't if this don't work, Ron Rivera is on the hot seat, man. This is it. This oh, it's going to get ugly. Up a third in the fifth. I think by the fifth on? year, if we not look in a certain type of way, it's going to get ugly for him. This, this going on his third year, right? This, yeah. this is third year, right? Rico, it's, if 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 they don't win no more than five games, he's on a hot seat, man. Oh yeah, five? Oh yeah, nah, we're terrible. Yeah. If we only win five games. We, we won seven with Taylor Heineke. We won seven with Heineke. I'm saying. So what if we go backwards, though, Rico? I'm just saying. Yeah. Oh no. Nah, yeah. Robert Vero, super hot seat. We go backwards. Yeah. Because you know, like I said, man, all this military crappy talking. I didn't like the Jamin Davis move at 19. Nobody liked it. I didn't like it at all. I was against it. If you felt like you needed a linebacker that bad, you should have did everything you could to get Michael Parsons. You should have did everything you could to, grab to, to, to move up. You know, but you're going to sit up there and say he was having off the field problems. The man had 15 sacks as a rookie, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? The man had 15 sacks, Rico. The, <laughs> and he wasn't even was edge rusher pro. the whole time. He was playing middle linebacker yeah. at times. He was playing middle linebacker. The man was all <laughs> pro. But you won't talk about he had off the field issues. You need to get off that, bro. I agree. I agree. Dude, come on, man. He, look, I didn't like... I, I'm, I got another minute, which I'm gonna let you go, Rico. Are you good? I didn't like, I didn't like the Ron Rivera hire in the first place because I knew when he got over here, 
He was going to go to Carolina and get, bring all them people over here. That's my first thing. I've been a Washington Redskins. I'm 45 years old. This organization, this organization after 1992, it's been going downhill ever since, man. Since our last Super Bowl after 91, then 92, Joe Gibbs retired. It's been downhill really ever since, man. It, it ain't been good. Nah, I, I, I was born into franchise. mediocrity. I ain't, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> you 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 didn't you the Super Bowls we was winning the go, winning division in the eighties going to Super Bowls in the eighties and the nineties. I missed all of battles. every bit of it. <laughs> Man, you, you, that was the glory days, you know. And, and, and like I said, after after Sean Taylor got killed. It really went down here for me because we haven't had a safety since. Well, I mean, what's going on with the safety? I'm like, it's Cal Hamilton there. I'm drafting Cal Hamilton. I don't want no receiver. You go get the best player. You go get the best player in that position. I'm going to get Cal. If he's there in 11, Rico, I got to get him. Would you pass up on him? Would you really pass up on him at 11? If he's still at 11? You know, I, I want Cal Hamilton. I, I'm definitely one of those people that does. I would take Daxton Hill later too, but I want that. I want Kyle Hamilton. I want Kyle Hamilton, and uh, you know what, Rico? I think he gonna be there. I think he gonna be there at eleven, man. I really, I can't wait to the draft. I think he's gonna be there. Oh, your safety's always you slide, got... and these outside linebackers like Nicobe Dean, JOK yeah. last year, they're gonna slide as well. They, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. One more question before I let you go. I want, to get you, I, want you, I want you to get your other call. If I'm Terry McLaurin, I want out of here. You taking this long to extend <laughs> this man? I don't want to have nothing to do with this. Look, if they trade a Rico, could they get a first-round pick this year for him? Absolutely. You get a first-round pick for him this year? Trade him. He, he clearly you don't want to pay. You see, they don't want to pay him. What you gonna do? You gonna do the Brandon share? You gonna franchise him? Then you gonna franchise him again? Then he gonna walk? <laughs> I hope they're doing the Jonathan Allen where they wait until right before training camp. But hopefully no. before. I hope. I hope Carson Wentz is not stopping us from signing Terry long term. I it, really it, come on, Rico is twenty eight million dollar cap hit. Why do you think they had to let go of Eric Flowers now? No, oh, yeah, man, I night is all come, of them. Yeah, you had to let him go because you can't. Terry McLaurin, okay, Jacksonville just gave dude Christian Kirk 18, damn near $20 million, and only had 700 yards receiving. Are you kidding me? This was Jacksonville just gave Christian Kirk. You think Terry McLaurin ain't going to want no $25, $26 million a year? I should say not to pay him that type of money, Rico. Get to your phone calls. I hope you do live stream again. I definitely can't wait to talk to you again, man. I'll holler at you later, Rico. Thanks for the call, baby. All right, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, man. First of all, I will be live streaming all through the draft, rounds one through four at the okay. very least. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, summer, Saturday. Um, okay. And we'll be doing, we'll be taking calls after the draft. And yeah, man, the Jaguars okay. messed up the game for everybody. You're giving Christian Kirk all that money. Yeah. yeah, they did. They messed it up. <laughs> okay, Rico, go and take your other calls, bro. I mean, appreciate it. All right, Rico, later. Yes, sir. Man, the Jaguars messed it up for everybody giving Christian Kirk that money. I was so mad when I saw that because I already knew. I already knew everybody else was going to look at Devontae Adams like, you paying Christian Kirk this. I need at least this. Tyreek Hill, same thing. Now Terry McLaurin, A.J. Brown, and D.K. Metcalf, Debo Samuel. Everybody looking like, ain't no way Christian Kirk getting this type of money, and I'm not getting at least this much more. It's bad, bro. Let me add my boy Joseph on. Oh, oh, before I bring on Joseph, I meant to reply to my boy Chuck. Appreciate you pulling up and supporting. He said he went to school with my parents. I appreciate the support, man. Appreciate you pulling up and everything. I will not be at the draft thing, FedEx. I'm still going to be in Atlanta. I will be live streaming like I normally do during the draft on my channel and all of that. So make sure y'all pull up for that if you can. But, man, shouts out to my boy Chuck, man. Uh, let me bring Joseph on next. I hate the way I sound in these retainers, man. I'm, a, I'm about to take these out during the draft. I'm not supposed to, but I'm not about to sound like this throughout all Thursday night. Um, what's good, my boy Joseph? What's good? What's good, dude? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you feeling? I'm cool. How are you? Cooling, cooling. Weather getting better. Yeah. Uh, so, this draft is coming up. Mm -hmm. Thursday. If yes, we sir. don't get, if we don't get down here with him, like I said, 
on Derek Stingley. If Derek Stingley falls, not fall, if Derek Stingley gets picked at 10 by the Vikings, I'm going to sack the owner. But um, <laughs> other than that, uh, let's see. I don't want to. I don't want to receive at eleven. But but all right. I got a proposition. What if right? We give the Ravens the wrong pain. Uh huh. And the Ravens give us their fourteenth pick and the third rounder for this year. Okay. I'm I'm not sure if they do that. They may like Jordan Davis better than Deron Payne straight up. So I don't know. But if they did, hey, I'll take it. I'll <laughs> I'll 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 carry Deron Payne to the to the Ravens myself. <laughs> and then with that pick, we could we could get no yeah eleventh. We'll have the eleventh and the fourteenth, or we will be like flopping picks or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. But we could have the 11th and 14th. And then we get uh, defense like a, I don't know, like a, like a safety or a cornerback. And then uh, with that luxury pick, we could get uh, a quarterback if uh, Malik Willis is available or uh, Desmond Ritter. Or mm-hmm. uh, nobody likes Kenny Pickett like that. If it's available, uh, then we could take him or get uh, Chris Olave or uh, or uh, what's his name? Um, Trey Burke. Mm-hmm. Traylon Burks. Uh, uh, and um, what is that UFC guy's name? Drake oh, London. Yeah, Drake London. Yeah. 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 And so we can get them. Or Yeah. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah that's good. what's so interesting about this draft that since nobody knows what's going on, not even just Washington commander wise, but even just top ten, nobody knows. There's so many different combinations that we can think up and imagine. Like it's it's this is gonna be fun. Thursday is going to be really fun. Thursday and Friday gonna be super fun. Yeah. But what's not fun is that we don't have a third round pick. Oh yeah. Awful. Awful feeling. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm telling you. Carlton West better throw for five thousand this year. Shoot. If he doesn't hey, give him the weapons. Yes, Already got a few. Already got Terry's gonna be the best receiver he's ever thrown to. We don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to come up, come up to the top of a with a bag of duty, a dog, <laughs> a bag of dog duty, and burn it up in his yard. You got to threaten that man that way to get him actor. But yeah, like I mean, like I've already said, all the stuff we gave up to get him, and not even just picks, but the players we couldn't re-sign. I mean, like they're talking about in the chat right now, my boy Ray and all of them. Like Eric Flowers is still technically out there, so we may bring him back after the draft. But like Tim Settle, Matt and I is losing all of those guys, not going after more free agents during the off season because we traded for Carson Wentz. It sucks. So I hope he balls out, man. I really do, because all of this we're going through because we got. Got him. I really hope he balls out. Yeah, for sure. I think. I think. I think after the draft, we're gonna we're gonna resign Eric Flowers for cheap though, like two years, uh, five million guaranteed or something, or five million dollar contract. That'd be cool. Yeah. If he accepts it. Yeah. yeah. And um, a veteran. We need a veteran linebacker. It's um. Please. Hmm. Who, who are you talking about? Anthony Walker or something like that? Uh, AJ Johnson from uh oh, AJ, from the Broncos. Yeah, I'm from, not sure. Uh, I, I don't think he's been signed yet. I'm not sure. But Kyle Van Noy is still out there, I believe. Technically, uh, Quan Alexander, even though with the injury concerns, you know, there's, there's guys out there after the draft, and we don't address it. Yeah, we should get one of those, and uh, we should not bring back John Bostic because oh yeah, no, even with Please. injury. <laughs> Even with his injury, uh, he did better without him. So, uh, I mean, you know, no offense, but uh, offense. Yeah. 
Man, hey, please no John Bostic. I'm about to start a no John Bostic campaign on Twitter or something. I forgot he existed. <laughs> yeah. All right, bud. That's all I have to say. All right, man. Appreciate that, Joseph. Appreciate that. I'm I'm definitely working on bringing back the Friday stream so we could talk everything like anime and all that type of stuff. I'm, I'm working on bringing that back. May not be like next Friday, but I do want to bring that back, especially for the regular season. So we'll see, man. Cool, cool, cool. Speaking of anime, what episode you on the One Piece? Boy, I'm behind, bro. I'm dubbed. I'm not about to sub all of them episodes. I love. I, I can watch sub with certain stuff, but not for 300 episodes. I'm too far behind. So yeah, all of the crazy stuff that's going on right now. I just finished uh Domingo, the pink, 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 fluffy jacket you wearing. Finished I just finished Rosa? that. You say what? You finished Dress Rosa. Yeah, Dress Rose, I did that like a couple of months ago, and now I'm just waiting for the dub to stack back up. Because I'm not, I'll watch sub for certain things like Demon Slayer and Attack on Titan. I'm not doing it for 200, 300 episodes of One Piece. I love One Piece, but I can't do it. So I'm still far back. I can't even talk about One Piece. That's you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Rico. Yes, sir. So take care, Rico. Oh, okay. Man, yes, sir, man. I'll catch you later, man. All right, bro. Appreciate you calling in. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My boy Joseph. My boy Joseph. All right, we got Rich next, and then we got Preston after that. Was good, Rich, and I saw your comment. I got it up. It was kind of difficult to do it. I had to like screenshot it on my phone, email it to myself. It was crazy, but I got you. Was good, Rich. Uh, man, it was good, man. It was good. You sound uh, sick. You good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Allergies or uh, sick? Uh, really, allergies, but for real, for real, neither. Oh, uh, okay. So, oh, okay. Oh, it went away. Dang, come back. <laughs> All right. Uh, but nah. I mean, hey man, I'm about to come out with my list. You know, I did my list last year. Check check my transcripts. I I, I do this. I, like I just do this. I this one thing I could put my hat on. I, I mean, I, I just do this, simply put. Uh, I got some guys, man, like like I'm saying, Zion McCullum. Like, I really think he's that dude. Bro, oh, bro I'm right with you like, on I the really Zion. Think he's that dude. <laughs> I'm right with you on the Zion, bro. That C minus, they hate it. Yeah, bro. They, they hate it with the C minus. Nah, they, they super hate it. But, like, <laughs> obviously, I would want Kyle Hamilton first, but, like, in this scenario, I traded back, got Chris Olave, who I would want second. I really love Chris Olave. I've, like I said, I've been on his case for years, bro. Like, literally years. And then Leo Chanel, athletic freak. I think he's somewhat underrated. Jelani Woods. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put the uh, I'm not gonna put the tag on him, but I'm going to say uh, he reminds me of number eight in Atlanta. Now, I'm okay. not going to say any names, no, but... The ceiling is crazy. Is. Him and uh, I forgot his wow. name. We were talking about it earlier from UCLA. Jelani Woods, and it's that other guy that was playing quarterback. He's just now switching to tight end. Those three have the three highest ceilings out of the tight ends, all, all of them in his class. I'm, oh, you talking I about love... the dude in your mock draft? Yeah, I can't remember. Armani, whatever his name is, Rodgers or something. Um, those no three have the t me, highest ceilings easily out of this tight end class, for sure. I'm, I love Jelani. Right, and that's why I rock with you. Like we like the same type of prospects. Like that that's that's one thing we could just like say that we just get along together on. Like but what do we pay the these coaches for to that... draft high floor guys all day? <laughs> high floor, no right, ceiling guys. Okay. What are these coaches getting paid millions of dollars for if you can't take the guys with the higher ceilings and get the ceilings out of them? And the thing is, like in the early rounds, even like first or second, maybe third on occasion, I can I can understand going safe. I, I can understand that, but mm -hmm. when you get to uh, even like same thing, second, third, especially day three, like sometimes you just you just got to, bro. You just got to you just got to go with the potential, and especially if you're sixth, seventh UDFA, bro, just take a swing. I like none of these guys are safe. I none agree. Of them. None of us. <laughs> Nobody. I agree. Take a swing on that most athletic guy, the guy with the best intangibles, the guy that tested best. The guy that has the most film, the most experienced guy that played on the best team. However, whatever you like, take that in the in those late rounds. Mm -hmm. You can do everything else early on, but in the late rounds, do what you feel comfortable doing. 
like me and you, clearly we like athletic players that are tall, lengthy, all, all that. Yes. Do, do. You can't Other teach guys athleticism. Like guys that have, you cannot teach that. Some some people may like guys that have a certain trait or uh, are special in one thing but suck at everything else, which is understandable. I, I fully Belichick. understand that. That's why I like uh, Verone McKinley. Yeah, that's why I like Verone McKinley. Just ball hawk and nothing else. Small, <laughs> not the fastest. Just, just ball, just great ball skills. That's it. I, I understand it, but uh, I mean, when you look at this mock draft, you address ev- absolutely everything but interior defensive alignment, and that's not too big of a need, especially right now. Like as of this moment, right now, it's not a big deal. Still free agents out there too. But if you trade too. Deron Payne this off season, it's a big deal. Yeah. If you don't sign any free agents, it's a big deal. Yeah. But when you look at it, you you address the running back. You you address you somewhat address safety. I really like Ster, uh, Sterling Weatherford. It's one of my guys. Same with Zion McCullum. Jerome Ford's nice home run threat. Uh, Cole Strange. Uh, that's just a he's a beast. I'm, I'm just letting you know. It got an A grade. We know what Chris Olave is. Leo Chanel. Like I said, that's that's country strength right there. That dude. <laughs> he he. That's just country strength and. You heard what I said about Jelani Woods, number eight, basically. Mm-hmm. I feel that. And I'm not going to say names because I'm not going to put that target on his back. That, yeah, that yeah. sounds like a setup. And you'll acquire picks in this trade because if you look at the top, you see the trade mm-hmm. with the uh, Ravens. With, trade back go from bit. zero for th- third round picks to two of them. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I, hey, I had to do it. I had to. I had to. <laughs> like, it was... Like I'd look, I'd rather have one first to one second zero thirds than one than zero first two seconds and one third. I I promise you I would. But <laughs> I would also like to have a, I would like to have one of each at least. I mean I, I would I would like to have one of each. Does that's me personally. But hey man. This what it is for real for real. Oh yeah, and I don't know how this works, but if you go on uh RIS if you type in uh, Tristan McCollum, he I guess it's Zion McCollum's brother, and he was a senior, and he tested out well. But, like, whenever I do a mock draft, I can't find him. So I don't know if that's a problem or I something. I just don't and know that, man. with Marcel Debeau. Neither do I. Trist- but I did the same thing with Marcel Debeau, and he's not popping up on uh, no mock draft sites. Yeah, that boy, nobody hip on him. <laughs> he's one of the only people. You and RAS out here. Nah, cause I was I was you know, I was just messing around on RAS one day and it just popped in Marcel the I'm like uh, and I looked at strong safety, she was the number one strong safety. I'm like, who is this? Then it said Germany. I'm like, Oh, he's an IPP player. Then I look him up again, I'm like, Is he the as raw as Samus Reyes? No, that he played in a professional German league or the Europe the Europe League, whatever it is for football. I didn't even know Zion McCullum had a brother until just now. And he's just as af- almost just as athletic. Two. I think he has two, bro. I, I literally think he has two. Oh, yeah. That family is crazy. <laughs> and thank you, Ma. I definitely leave a like, All everybody. Of them with the same yeah, no, nah, I'm cutting man. Th- I appreciate you getting, because I already know RES exists. But I appreciate uh-huh. you motivating me to look at this, because I'm probably about to just start playing with this later on tonight after i do yeah, a couple of I, film sessions i had the same issue as you i'm like how do i how do i do this and it like i've been having that issue since like last year and then i was and then i just waited for it to load one day i'm like oh it's right here <laughs> and i don't know how you thought of that just like i don't know how dequavius found bola kit i don't know what made you just sit there and yeah, look I, at a blank screen until it worked no <laughs> it, it had the little like uh Loan enjoy so i'm like let me just wait for this and it was like oh this is literally everything i'm looking for yeah i appreciate it <laughs> thank you yeah but that's it man i know y'all got other callers man appreciate it yes sir yes sir man i appreciate you calling in rich i like the mock draft too definitely had to pull that up for you and yeah man we about to get back hey, we about I, to get back this, busy man. i'm gonna be live streaming more often and all of that so Hey, and check out my Twitter list. I'm telling you, my last year I hit crazy. I'm doing it again. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling All right, you. bet, bet for sure. We're gonna talk about it in the draft. You know, Thursday we're gonna be live streaming for like four or five hours. We're gonna talk about all of that. Oh, okay. 
All right, man. Take care, Rich. All right. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And this will be the final caller. I'm going to bring up my boy, Preston. How you doing over there, Preston? Channel member hey, in the what's building. Up, Rico? Another channel member. What's good? Hey, man. What's up? Uh, I'm a little under the weather. Uh, oh, man. But, uh, I, just, I, I had a couple... I had a couple thoughts. Uh, first of all, you know, I'm a lifelong uh, Washington football, Redskin, Commanders, whatever you want to call this, man. Yes, sir. Uh, and and name, name aside, you know, winning will resolve any issues that all of us have with the name. So mm-hmm. let's stop that in the forum. Carson Wentz, look, man, you can redeem yourself this season as a football talent and restore confidence that the league would have in you if you go out and you win the ball games. Look, if you hold serve and just win seven ball games, you're no better than Taylor Heineke, and you have a weaker <laughs> schedule than Taylor had last year. Way, way so weaker. Need, Literally hardest to, so, to easiest. The conference has been locked. You need to do at least three games better with a with a schedule that we have in our conference. And our conference ain't got any better. Yeah, they'll draft. But I, I I think Dallas has lost some talent. Yep. And and you know Philly Philly has has done okay in free agency, but nothing to nothing to really write home about. And the Giants, I mean, come on, the Giants are just pitiful. So I see out of our division at least four wins guaranteed, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, you you hold serve on at least seventy five percent of the games that you play division rivals in, and you win at least half on the road, half on the road. So you should win at least five, six of those games, and then you win the rest of the games that you're supposed to win. That'll get you easily to ten wins. If you get eleven, you're talking about division. You're talking about maybe a two or three seed in the NFC. And of course you're going to have to have, uh, of course you're going to have a home playoff game against one of the weakest, uh, one of the one of the third weakest opponents that uh, came out of the wild card that round. Barely so. crawled in. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you're going to have one of those. So you may have a win, a, a first round win in the playoffs if you get to the playoffs. But before we get up to all that, I'm going to defer to the experts the quote-unquote experts on the draft, I have not seen a single great draft win the championship in a very long time. I've seen a single transformative player come into the league, uh, cue Mr. Holmes uh, over in, 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 in Kansas City, that's a transformative player who can put a team on their back and actually win games for you. Yes, you drove, you uh, drafted well, you got Tyreek. Tyreek ain't in there anymore. So what is Mr. Holmes going to do without Tyree Kill? They're going to probably try to draft or steal a daggone receiver in the draft to try to get some of that production back because Holmes needs Mahomes needs a receiver. Yeah. Well, the, uh, our quarterback, the guy that we got in a trade and traded some of our draft pick away, draft picks away, <laughs> Carson, Mr. Carson, <laughs> just. Mr. Carson Wentz, look, he, I'm, 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 I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trivialize his talent or anything like that. Most of his problem is up in the head. If he can run an offense, he can do some timely passes. The offensive line can block for him. And I don't think that's a big if. I think the offensive line with our offensive line coach, uh, I think if they put scrubs out there and they get a training camp behind them, I think they can b- basically do uh, great run blocking, which is going to help the daggone passer out a lot. And and when you got to get those deep shots, you got receivers can get underneath the daggone ball and get you some big plays. And I think McLaurin's going to stretch the field. Yeah, sign that man to a long-term deal. I don't Please. care who you have to steal or lie or, or take lunch money from. You need to get that guy <laughs> signed under contract. That's your boy. That's your homegrown talent. That's somebody you drafted. You brought up in your system. That's somebody that is a is a gamer. That dude is taking some licks over the middle, yes. court passes, got up, beat his chest, and said, yeah, give me some more. Yes, That's sir, the guy that I want to play. be. Yeah. That's the guy I want to play for me. I don't care about some shiny shiny coin that you drafted or some shiny coin 
that, that you got in free agency, that's your boy. That's your number one. He is a legitimate one, uh, number one receiver, and if you get some people around him that can help him out, you get the tight end game running, you get that daggone uh, third receiver uh, that, that, uh, that can give you those possessions or those third downs, guess what? That's going to be a dynamic offense, and Carson won't need to do much except be competent. Yep. Because he's got a much better arm than, than than Taylor Heineke had. Much better arm. We can we can put everything. We can talk about all the things we lost. We talk about all the players we lost. Look, we weren't going to keep those players anyway, especially after we signed McLaurin, especially after we got uh, we got Big Boy's contract last year. And we're certainly not going to keep them. We weren't going to keep all those guys anyway. They made a preemptive move. I don't like them because we got rid of a lot of depth that we had. But those are things that go away when you're trying to re-sign your players. That that happens. <laughs> you need a quarterback. They knew if they had they knew if they had gotten Mr. Wilson or they had gotten Mr. Green Bay and Mr. Deaver out of Green Bay, you would have had to give up that money anyway. Yeah. That was gonna happen anyway. They just didn't think they'd get a trade that quickly for somebody who was competent to run that position. They got it, they took their chance. Yeah, everyone has regrets. But the biggest regret you will have is next year if you don't have a quarterback. You got a quarterback this year. He can he can throw sling the ball down the field. <laughs> the question is, will he keep it together for 17 games during the season and get to the playoffs? Mm-hmm. That's your ultimate question. If you can keep him healthy, <laughs> you can keep his head about him. He'll be okay. I'm confident that that'll happen. If you if he's not rattled around and he's not hit a lot. <laughs> He's going to be great for you. When is it? When does Carson Wentz do bad? When he's rattled, when he's shaken, when he's beaten up during the season. Yep. That's when he loses confidence, and that's when he's not the quarterback he needed to be. But that's how most diva quarterbacks are. That's how <laughs> most quarterbacks are. I mean, look, look. As much as people love and praise Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers has not done nothing since he won the Super Bowl title. Nothing. Hey, he They've given the that man all that money. He's, be pulling he's the- been a, per- a perennial pro-, pro Bowl quarterback. How many titles does that man have? <laughs> Him and Peyton Manning getting the playoffs, and I don't know what happens. <laughs> I don't know what happens. I mean, dude, dude, I, I mean, am I lying here? Am I lying here? Now, we, we look at Mahomes. Mahomes has gone two Super Bowls. With it, without Tyreek, will he get back to another Super Bowl in the next five years? Or would they need to find some 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 uh, some game changer that's going to make him the dynamic quarterback he was with with uh, uh, with Tyreek? I, I don't know. James I mean, it, you know, it's sort of it's sort of like in basketball. You know, it doesn't take one player; it takes three to win a title. They say these days on on a football on a basketball team. Maybe it takes two or three guys <clears throat> because Aaron Rodgers certainly is an answer in, in Green Bay. As great as his arm talent is, he don't have anything, quote unquote, to support him to get him to the next level. And it's certainly not going to be him by himself. And the way he acted in the off season, he got rid of anybody who was going to help him. What what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look what happened to the Nets. I mean, Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving, through through decisions he made, played less than half the games they played this season because he decided to have a certain stance on the vaccination thing. Look, I'm all about freedom. You do what you want with your body. But if you're about a team and winning, and that's what it's about for you, and you're there for your boys, you do everything in your power to be there with your boys and for your boys. Don't give me this crap about your team and you're going to help your team and all this, and we didn't have time to gel. They didn't have time to gel because they weren't together most of the season. <laughs> so don't give me no garbage about team chemistry and all this other stuff. And when, when you – I mean, they their ownership spent millions bringing people in, getting rid of draft picks, moving people around so they would have some talent on the court to win some ball games. They get the playoffs. They get bounced in four. So, I mean, I'm a football fan. I know a little bit about something about basketball, but let's, I use that analogy because it's accurate. Mm-hmm. It's not about one guy. It's about a team 
gelling together at the right time and winning ball games. I think you got ingredients right there to win. I yeah, Carson Wentz is not the greatest NFL quarterback to ever live. I'm not going to even play that game. But nor was Joe Theismann, nor was Mark Rippon, and and nor was Doug Williams. They were guys that were there in the moment with the team around them ready to take the, take the prize. <clears throat> they believed in team. They went out and played together as a team. They won together with, as a team, and they used their defense when they had to to stop players from scoring on them in crucial situations. That's what our team has the makings of being, and they <clears throat> understand that they can achieve all that they desire, they have to remember the mission to end is win ball games and to win together as a team. It's not a lot one guy, but it takes guys to win. Mm-hmm. That's all I got to say, bro. All right, man, my boy Preston, man. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man. Appreciate you, too, and thank you for the good work. I'm, that's why I'm a channel member. Yes, sir, man. Thank you. And definitely get well soon, man. I want you to be able to enjoy the draft, fully healthy, everything right, smooth. Hopefully we pick a guy that you want, man. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah, yes, sir. I appreciate that. And you, you take care of yourself, you and your family. Give him the best, and I'll be there on draft day to, to, to listen to your coverage because I know you're going to bring it. Thank you, man. you, man. Appreciate that. Have a good evening, man. You too. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Great, great, great calls coming in today, man. We had a great show. Um, should I just go ahead and do a quick little mock draft to see what we get? I know most people use PFF, but I'll use the, the draft network to switch it up, bro. We're going to use the draft network. We're going to do a little mock draft real quick before we get up out of here. Like a quick little five minute, not going to sit on it too long. Um, Where we go? How we do this? How we do this? Where the, where the thing at? Where the thing at? Where the thing at? Where the thing at? Start a mock draft. Here we go. Let's get it. Let's just do a quick little mock draft real quick. You know what I'm saying? I use PFF because I like Yeah, see, that's... And that PFF trade, uh, their little trade simulator, how you do it, where, like, the odds of it being accepted, and if they accept it or not, I love that. I absolutely... Ever since uh, Jamal Tellett put me on to that, I've been running them straight through there. But so I'm just going to go ahead and do this one because it's cl- it's more closely aligned. It's literally the big board I use for this. And, um, and I'm not going to do... Um, trades on this one because i just want to do a quick one i may you know what we'll do we'll probably i'll probably because the the draft thursday starts at night i'll probably start live streaming like 30 minutes maybe an hour before we'll run a couple of mock drafts then and we'll probably do some trades and stuff like that then but right now i'll just do like a quick little just a quick little trade see what's going on you know what i'm saying we'll do we'll do the we'll do the predictive board see what's going on real quick Wait, trade it. Oh, these are all the ones that's already been traded. All right, so we're here at 11. Are we doing most realistic or what would I want to do? Because y'all already know, bro. <laughs> My boy Malik Willis and Jamison Williams right there. Y'all already know what I want to do. Y'all already know Jamison. Like, Jamison Williams is the best combination of what I want to do and what I think will happen. Malik Willis is what I want to do the most, but I already know it's not going to happen, so we're not even going to touch that. So I'm definitely thinking Jamison Williams, but most realistic is Drake London because I've heard our name attached to him so much. I don't know if it's a smoke screen or not. And with Curtis Samuel going through with his leg injury situation, even though they're optimistic about it, are they willing to take a Jamison Williams with another leg injury? Fortunately, I think the pick is London if we trade back. Bro, I, bro I'm sorry. I might have to... Uh, Daxton Hill. Now, I'm curious. Where did Kyle Hamilton go? To the Giants? They got... Ooh, the Giants got Evan Neal and Kyle Hamilton. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh, that hurts. Ooh, that's ugly. Oh, my boy Teron Walker went number one overall. All that does is help my recruiting, so I hope that happens. Uh, I hope that helps Georgia's recruiting right there. Jeremy, y'all remember Jermaine Johnson was at Georgia. He transferred to Florida State because he wasn't going to get no play. Well, he's going to get playing time, but y'all saw how dominant our defensive line was. So it may. I, I'm not mad at him for going to Florida State like I am with Jermaine Burton going to Alabama. Jermaine Johnson went to a place where he will have a bigger role and more snaps and a bigger impact. And now look at him going top 10. Jermaine Johnson may not have gone top 10 in the draft if he stayed with Georgia this past season. He would have got a ring, but. 
It wouldn't help this draft stock that much. So we'll try to go if we don't trade back. I mean, trade. Yeah, no, I'll do. Tr I'm gonna do trades Thursday. Like I said, I'm gonna stream like an hour, like a 30 minutes to an hour before the actual draft real life starts on Thursday. So I'm. We're gonna do trades then. I'll do it through Pro Football Focus, and we'll do trades then. For now, I'm just gonna run through this without doing trades. Just a little quick mock draft. I felt like that should complete everything. We took a look at some prospects. We looked at the RES for a couple of guys to look at, at athleticism scores. We took calls. We talked about pretty much everything under the sun. So I figured by default I should at least do one mock draft. I'll just do a quick one real quick. Um. So yeah, I I can't. I don't care. I got uh, Jamison Williams right there. I'm taking him. I'm sorry. Jordan Davis went to the Vikings. Okay. Eagles take Drake London. Malik Willis goes to the Saints. I'm not mad at that. Even though I prefer Malik Willis with the, the Steelers, but the Saints are probably the next best thing. Who took Daxton Hill? The Cowboys got Daxton Hill. Oh, no. I'll flip chairs. I will flip chairs in real life. I ain't going to lie. Uh, who we got left? We got the running backs. We got Tyler Smith. I like Tyler Smith. I think they like Tyler Smith too. Yeah, they like Tyler Smith. They had they met with him. They brought him in for a, a top thirty visit. You have Jalen. I can't. I can't disrespect y'all like that. Jalen Petrie is there. I'm not gonna disrespect y'all like that. Even though I'm not quite as high on him as y'all are, and I love Sean Ryan. I love Sean Ryan out of UCLA. Love him. And, of course, my boy Jamari Salyer is right there. Chad Moon is even there. It's a lot of guys there. Leo Janelle. But I can't hate. I can't hate on y'all. The, 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 the crowd has spoken throughout this stream. Not even just now, but a lot of y'all apparently love Jalen Petrie even more than I do. I'm going to take him. I took Jamison Williams for me. We're going to take um, Jalen Petrie for y'all. And let's get it moving. Uh, my boy, oh, I already put it in. He said take Muma at 47. But yeah, I mean, there's so many guys that love Petrie in this chat. So I'm going to go ahead and take him with this mock draft. I've never taken him in a mock draft, so that makes it a little bit more fun. And what happened in this this Grizzlies game? This this my, Well, really, the Timberwolves game. Forget the Grizzlies. Love John Morant, love the Grizzlies, but it's the Timberwolves all day right now with Ant. Um, last time I looked, because I like I said, whenever y'all, I'm listening to y'all with the calls and everything, I'm giving y'all my undivided attention. So last time I looked, we were down like 0 to 8 or 0 to 9. Now we're up by 8. I don't know what happened, so I'm happy. Check George Pickens in a second. Oh, yeah. Did you see our new field? No, we got a new field? I missed that whole thing. Send that to me on Instagram. I didn't even know about that. Um... But uh, take George Pickens in the second. I definitely would have if we didn't take receiver in the first. Like I said, my favorite draft possibility is Kyle Hamilton in the first and George Pickens in the second for sure. Um, Dang, a bunch of running backs. What we got? Let's go. They like Maja Sanders, so that could be a pick. You could take James Cook, and then, you know, when you're ready to move on from J.D. McKissick, maybe two years down the line. But, no, nah, I think you can wait for that. Carson Strong, quarterback. Carson Strong, Spencer Buford, they really like him. They've met with him. Ty Chandler, Washington Command Center's guy. Yeah, bro, the tight ends got mutilated. I if Greg Dolchich was there, I'm taking him without a doubt at 113. Yeah, there was a big run on tight ends. They killed them. They, they took them all. They took Brandon Smith. They took they they took a lot. They took Tyreek Smith. They took Kyle Phillips. Let's see. Jelani Woods is gone. Yeah, they took everybody, man. They took all the tight ends. I take a chance on Carson. I'm thinking Tar Carson Strong, too, honestly. I'm not going to lie. I think that makes too much sense. Like, even because even just the fact that, first of all, he slid this far into the fourth round. And, I mean, if you had to compare Carson Strong to somebody, wouldn't it be Carson Wentz? I mean, not even just the first name-wise, just play style, strong arm, mobile, but not very mobile. You know what I'm saying? Mobile enough. Uh, I think Carson Strong makes sense here, so we'll go with Carson Strong. But, yeah, I completely agree with all of y'all that are saying that trading back makes a lot more sense, especially for a mock draft. I think uh, I, I agree. I think trading back is just way better mock draft-wise and probably even real life-wise, depending on how we finesse it. Like Strong, but if wins don't work out, I would just want to go to a top, go to the top next year. Oh, to get, like, a top guy, get, like, Bryce Young, CJ Stroud. Oh, Zion McCullum, he's lurking. Is he going to be a... If Zion McCullum's there at our next pick, I'm taking him. I don't care what's going on. Literally don't care what's going on. Don't care. Come on. 
Don't care. Oh, who took him? The Bears took him. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, I'm hurt. Two, three picks before us, too. That's so mean. Isaiah Polamo, I like him at safety. You know, he got that. He got a little bit of Troy Polamalu in him. He's like 6'4". Really long, faster than you'd expect. Reed Blankenship. Is that Rodrigo's Blankenship brother? Is that? Is, are they related? My Georgia Bulldog kicker? Uh, this was uh, let him. We got to take him. I want to. I agree. I hope so. I like Paolo Miles too. I do too. We already took Petrie though, but I like Paolo Miles as well. I, I mocked them to us in one of my mock drives. I missed it. Yeah, Chanel's gone. We took Petrie. I asked the same thing. Where we at? My picks. Let me just show y'all because I already knew y'all liked Jalen Petrie a lot. And even though I was about to take somebody else, the y'all, the, you know, y'all have spoken. I couldn't avoid taking Jalen Petrie as much as I like him. And I had to take Jamison Williams first round since he was there. I couldn't avoid that. We took Carson Strong in the fourth because he slid so far. Didn't expect that. So now, you know, see what we got going on right here. Or he took receiver. Y'all let me know who y'all might like. Chris, Christopher Allen is an interesting prospect. Okay. Yeah, I like I like I like Polo Mile, but we already took Jalen Watermeyer at this point, maybe. Jalen Watermeyer, I think that Cole Turner. I'm not that high on Jalen Watermeyer, though, me personally. But I think this is like the I think fifth round is a sweet spot for tight end. Especially if guys slide. They hated in this, so people did not slide in this. I read super white, Milsey. Wait, I think Cole Kelly in the seven is the best backup for Wentz. I can, okay. Search quarterback. Co search corners. Let's see. Let's look at corners real quick. I was supposed to be running through this faster than this, but I, I got stuck. I really wanted Zion McCullum. Like, the, the Bears hate it, bro. I'm mad at the Bears in real life right now. Like, this actually happened. Like, this, like Rome McKinley stood there just, just say Petrie to slot Verone at safety. Mm, that's interesting. That's an interesting strategy there. That's interesting. Uh, should I just do that? Should we finesse that? Petrie and slot. Verone McKinley at safety. That's what we're feeling, maybe. Got to get the Maryland tight end. Um, let's see. Let me see. Let me look at tight ends. Who we got going on right now? Austin Allen, Jaden. I just, I'm not as high on Jalen Watermeyer. My boy Armani Rogers is still there. He's probably going to go undrafted, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, I might just go ahead and take Verone McKinley. I ain't going to lie. Cole Turner. We feeling Cole Turner, maybe? I'm definitely feeling Cole Turner more than Jalen Watermeyer. Uh... Rome McKinley. You know what? Let's see. Who's best player? But I don't even know Chris Owens like that. I'm not going to lie. So we'll probably, just for going through this quicker, I'll probably, yeah, I don't like Jalen Watermeyer like that. We'll probably, I'll just probably go ahead and take Cole Turner. I think they would take Cole Turner. I think that's fairly realistic. Uh, Let's see what we got going on. Next pick. Who we got left? People, boy, people flying off the boards right now. It's ugly. It's ugly. I think Allen would be a great rotation at defensive end. Okay, interesting. And yeah, I cannot pronounce that name, Washington Command Center. You got that one, boy. Boy, if you could pronounce that. Abram Smith, Nick Grant. What we got going on here? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It's kind of ugly. A lot of my sleepers got taken sooner than I thought they would. Like, they just, they just, they hate it. Why they hate so bad? Did they know the players I like? Did I do something wrong to this mock drive? Because Zion McCullum being gone by the time we picked again hurt. I forgot about the, I forgot about the Eric King too, ain't gonna lie. Get the Alabama defensive lineman. Let me see. Where is he at? Who are you talking about? Are you talking about Taylor Humphrey? Oh no, Le LeBrian LeBrian Ray. We might be we can get him with our next pick, so I'll probably wait on that. That might be the pick after that. Joshua Williams, he's still on the board. Let me see. I don't think so. Nah, he's not on the board. I don't think. Nah. Ray, I see Ray. I've been lacking this year. I barely know people in day three, mostly six and seven. Um. 
correct. Tariq from Penn State is the Power 5 version of McCullum. Plus, he's a DMV local. Okay. All right. All right. So, we can take a chance on him. Let me look at his RES real quick before we do that. Because I'm curious. You said he's like... He's basically Zion McCullum. Because, bro, I love some Zion McCullum. Now, we know that. We know that at this point. Let me see. Okay. 9.74 from Penn State. Okay. You might be on the... Okay. We'll take him. We'll take... I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. Tariq. Okay. I like that. Washington Command Center. My boy. My boy. I'll take that. All right. Now... With the DeBron Payne situation going on, and my boy suggested it in the chat, we'll go ahead and take, go ahead and take the Alabama defensive lineman, and that'll pretty much wrap it up, right? That'll wrap it up. It's pretty, I like this draft. This is nice. We got some playmakers. Got some playmakers here. Let's sir, let's see user picks. Excuse me, move out the way. Tyree Woolen is also cool. Going early though. Isaac Taylor Stewart. All right, man. We did a little something, something, right? You know, we did a little something, something. Let me change the way this is viewed there we go so we got jameson williams from alabama jalen petrie from baylor carson strong from nevada cole turner from nevada as well i mean we literally had a private workout where carson strong and cole turner were there at the same time so if you draft carson strong in the fourth you're probably taking cole turner uh in the sixth if he's there like that makes a lot of sense and then Tariq, i like that thank you for putting me on the him watching the command center and lebrian ray I, I like that too we'll do that we'll take the guy from alabama let me go back who said oh, that was dave in dc that said get him all right that's a solid draft right there though but of course like i said trading back makes a lot of sense still still strong nice work thank you richard yes yeah, so yeah thank you dave thank you thank you Thank you, Jaymon. Yeah, so appreciate y'all for y'all input. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here. Like I said, um, Thursday, I'll be live streaming. Thank you, Rich. Uh, Thursday, I'll be live streaming the draft. I'll live stream rounds two and three on Friday as well. And I will at least live stream round four on Saturday. And I will on Thursday before the draft starts, I'll probably start live streaming like an hour before and we'll do some mock drafts. We'll do it through pro football focus so we can do some trade backs because trade backs are definitely better. Trade backs are definitely better, especially mock draft wise. It's just way more fun. Like to be able to trade back and get George Pickens and Daxton Hill. I got to do that at least once on Thursday when we live stream. So I will be live streaming, doing some mock drafts uh, leading up to the actual draft on Thursday. I'll start live streaming like an hour before. So get stuff. So make sure y'all pull up all of those live streams. I'll do unedited raw film sessions on uh, everybody we bring in. Um, and I'll probably do like a couple of edited ones that er that I'll get out to everybody. But I'm guaranteed raw and edited. Just looking at some highlight tape for the channel members only. Definitely pulling it up. Appreciate that. Thank you for pulling up Uptown. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Jaymon. Glad you're back streaming. See you at the draft. Yeah, man. We gonna Jaymon. I promise. I do want to get back to gaming. I'm just waiting for the right game to get me back to streaming on my gaming channel. Maybe when I get back on Halo. I've been playing a little bit of Apex, but not enough. I've been playing. A a little bit of Fortnite, but not enough my boy aovz if you go subscribe to him he's been uploading footage of us playing Fortnite, but i'm not on it that much he'll play it a, a lot of his videos won't even have me in it i'll be in the party chat but i won't be playing Fortnite because i just don't like it that much um so once i get a game that i'm like ready to super dive into other than lost art because it's an mmo nobody really cares about an mmo like that so once like another sh like uh shooter comes out like another shooter battle royale something like that i'll start live streaming on my gaming channel again jaymon um who are the film sessions you have in line for us to remember i know i need to do nick cross i'm probably gonna try to do nick cross tonight or sometime tomorrow um because my boy asap geo asked me on twitter to do that so i'll definitely do that but like i said i'm gonna do film sessions on every player we bring in even undrafted free agents if i can just get along if i can get a hold of their highlight tapes i will um thank you dave in dc who uh but yeah i haven't really thought far ahead film session wise before the draft i know i want to do some georgia guys like george pickens and lewis scene and stuff like that tell me when you're on madden i'll let you know i haven't played it in like over a week but i'll let you know usually make a list of underclassmen when i'm looking at current guys i gather the names from big places then follow stats and watch games to see if people are worth the stats okay professional 
Party Chat Podcast. I'm going to talk to Shae because, again, it's been basically my fault that we haven't been doing them. I've just been busy and stuff like that, so I do want to bring back the Friday stream with Shae. Again, it's been my fault, so I just got to talk to him and let him know I'm ready and we're going to get it going. Let me know when we starting up this franchise, when college football come out, if you're not going to. Oh, yeah, NCAA come out, y'all got me. Again, I'm not a big fan of Madden, but when NCAA comes out, we, I will definitely have like a, a channel – uh, league going or something like that for sure it's cool this year i was super behind lacking last year i was on and i didn't feel like i did enough but i knew hella undrafted and sevens I always keep an eye on recruits from all around the dmv and y'all know i got atlanta i'm gonna keep my eye on guys in atlanta and georgia you know what i'm saying so y'all got the dmv i got the georgia we're gonna stay tuned not party chat with courtney way uh Oh, the Party Chat podcast with Courtney. Oh, I guess we just, I'll, I'll have to probably remind him because he hasn't really been super uploading with that. And we're probably just waiting for something big to happen again and we'll bring it back up. So yeah, thank you for bringing that back up. I'll, I'll hit up Courtney about it because, uh, uh, hey, there's people out here requesting it. You know what I'm saying? So I'll, I'll hit him up. Um, but yeah, man, I appreciate all of y'all. I will catch y'all with live streams um, all throughout the draft again, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And on Thursday, I'll probably start live streaming like an hour before so we can do some mock drafts and discuss the draft strategy of everything that we know so far from Rivera and Mayhew and any reports we've gotten from like John Com and all of that, what we may do in the draft, all of that type of stuff an hour before. Um, so yeah, man, I appreciate y'all and I'll catch y'all with videos every day up to the draft, through the draft, after the draft, all of that. Cause it's so much to talk about. Pray we don't take Drake London. Ron is zero and three when it comes to drafting big wide receivers. I follow the big recruits from national recruiting to keep notes. I try to, but really outside of the SEC, it's hard for me to keep track. I keep track of SEC guys cause I play against them or they're on Georgia. So like I see them all the time, like Will Anderson. I wanted him really bad. He's from Atlanta, went to Alabama. Now he's probably going to go first overall in the draft. I can't help but keep track of guys like that. Um, and Traylon Burks, SEC, kept track of him because of that. So I'm, I try to keep track of everybody, but the SEC is where I normally keep track of it, not just because it's the best football, but I'm a Georgia fan, and those are the guys we play, so I try to keep track of those guys the most, and I watch them live. When we play Mississippi State, I have no choice but to notice Mississippi State players. You know what I'm saying? Man, if you keep an eye on NCAA game stats week to week, you will find some gems bet that see that's one thing i missed out. i don't really check stats like that so i need to add that to my game appreciate that my boy washington command center make sure i subscribe to him as well and oh uh, man y'all again i appreciate y'all and i will catch y'all with the live streams all the way to the draft through the draft after the draft we got to do the the draft grades and all of that type of stuff man okay because i check stats out here guys see a production max the height adam anderson just got in yeah i saw that jaymon that's a good note to leave on too. leave on some bad news i'm out i don't know why you had to bring that <laughs> you had to bring that up right there that's why i love pure strong great stats i lose it i got about 25 program rosters i comb oh yeah yeah this is ridiculous i'm out i'm out